And we are here live on Plus One EXP's Roll for Content channel. Today we are going to be playing Blood Feud. My name is Tony Vicenda. You can find me at Tony Vicenda across all social media platforms. I just came down the stairs way too fast getting more coffee, and now I'm breathing a little heavy, and I'm sorry, everybody. Um, uh, oh, quarantine fitness. Um, uh, my, uh, we here at Plus One EXP, our hope, our desire is to help uh, – Players find great games that they love um, and help indie designers find players who love their great games. Uh, Bloodfisk is, uh, uh, we've got Black uh, Peter from Blackfisk here with us in just one second. I'm going to let him tell you a little bit about the game that we're playing, but we're a brand that multi-classes in tabletop game design, beard and skincare alchemy, and the Bardic College of Content Creation. You can find everything we do at Plus One EXP on social media or at Plus One EXP.com. Um, uh, but you didn't come here to hear me talk. You came here to watch us play a game and to meet some other amazing people. So I'm going to kick things over to Quinn uh, to kick start us off. Quinn, tell people who you are, where they can find you online, and uh, what you do. Hello. My name is Quinn. You can find me online at Twitter at AuthenticityTRP because, you know, you just – it would be Authenticity Trip, but that one, that one character. Um, uh, what do I do? I'm currently in the middle of developing an isolation horror game, which started out as Forged in the Dark and now is something else. Um, and bring slaps my god uh it's not released anywhere it's not really available i mean it is the new engine version isn't you can on twitter there's a link to the discord when i'm in active play testing i'm gonna post in there you can see what's what you can check it out that's all i got hello <laughs> max so good tell us who you are what you do where people can find you on the internet I feel like I really got to up my energy level to, to follow that quinn uh i am max lender you can find me on the internet almost everywhere at uh, Max Lander. Um, I do a lot of things. I was a photographer for a really long time, and then I got into uh, VR and video game development, and then most recently have gotten into making tabletop role-playing games and uh, have a couple things out in the world. Today is the last day of my first Kickstarter uh, for uh, Visa Visage, which is a two-player competitive um, game inspired by Face Off. Uh, and that is all over my socials everywhere also. And I like to yell about masculinity a lot. So this is an exciting day for me. Yeah, we uh, um, it's been a blast to watch Visa Visage. Um, I remember also the first when I covered it on stream one day, like being like, oh, man, this is absolutely supposed to be Visa V. But I also don't know if it's supposed to be Visa Visage or Visa Visage. Um, and people definitely let me know which one it was. So um, but it's, it's a really dope looking game. I, people should definitely go check it out. Absolutely. Um, so Peter, go ahead and tell people who you are. Tell us a little bit about Black Fisk and then also tell people a little bit about the game we're going to be playing today. Yeah, thank you for inviting me here. I'm so glad to be here. Um, my name is Alf Peter Malmberg and I am one of the publishers at Black Fisk Publishing. We're a small Swedish collective of game designers and we, we started in 2018. So we've, uh, this is our first inter international project, and uh, we are so excited about like all of the new people to talk to, uh, because the Swedish market is so narrow. It's, it's such a small space. Uh, so uh, I love all the new faces that we get to talk to. Um, we, we love the we, Swedish market. We actually have a lot of friends in the West Coast OSR scene. Um, are a lot of a lot of good buddies of ours, and will come on stream sometimes. So. Um, I'm, I'm right. super excited about all the great things that are coming out of the Swedish indie scene right now. So super glad to have you. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about the, the game. Yeah. Uh, we are going to play, uh, our game blood feud, uh, which is written by me and my co-author, uh, Amos person. Um, it is a game about honor, power, and toxic masculinity. Uh, it's a GM list game where you play men who struggle to uphold their honor. Uh, and in the end, you see what that struggle has cost both them and their community. Uh, that's that's the pitch. <laughs> so it's a it's a good pitch. It's a challenging pitch. We were kind of all just talking this morning uh, as like, oh, like I just realized I've been so excited to play this, but now I also have to play one of these characters who's going to do things that I probably intrinsically disagree with, as well as learning some things in the process. So I'm. I'm very excited and very challenged by the idea of playing the game and looking forward to diving into it. Um, you know, we normally would introduce safety here, but there's actually some safety mechanics baked into this game. So, uh, Peter, I'm just going to hand things over to you to start taking us into, into Blood Feud. 
Yeah, thank you. Um, there is a pretty strict setup process in this game so that you, you should be able to pick it up and, and play it if, even if you've just read it, uh, read it through once. Uh, so it, it kind of holds your hand throughout this process, which I find very, uh, very nice since I always forget things unless I get reminded. Um, we uh, start by setting a time limit. Uh, we're going to play this uh, to about um, two o'clock where you are, uh, and then we're going to have a debrief. We'll see uh, how that works out. Um, next, we set the expectations. Uh, we use the CATS model, uh, uh, which is uh, developed by Patrick O'Leary. Um, CATS uh, is an abbreviation for concept, aim, tone, and subject matter. Uh, and there are uh, these uh, small texts uh, that we read in order to get every, everyone on the same page. Um, this is a game about toxic masculinity. And to those who have not heard the term before, it refers to certain common attitudes and behaviors among men that cause serious harm to them and to others around them. This is a game about people who are nasty to each other and about figuring out why. It is also a game about Vikings of pre-Christian Scandinavia, about honor and blood feuds, about courage and brutality, about corruption and consequences. Above all, it's a game about what it means to be a man in such a world and what consequences that has on the world around these men. If you have any questions on uh, these, just ask. Uh, otherwise, I will uh, go to the aim. Uh, the overarching goal of the game is to explore and experience toxic masculinity. Uh, each one of us will take on the role of a man in a Viking society, and we portray these men as we like. Um, but when we perform certain behaviors that triggers a move, there will be a shift in honor. And in this game, having honor is to have power. And in order to be powerful, we have to act in accordance to what is considered manly. So that is the aim. Uh, the tone, uh, this game wants a certain kind of tone to fully shine. Uh, we should try to aim for something that captures the following description. A thoughtful drama about relationships, competition, and social consequences. Uh, we should try to avoid comedy, uh, action, or pulp. Um, it it, it kind, kind of relies on us. I feel that playing this game, you, you have to kind of take the fiction seriously um, because otherwise it, it kind of misses the, the goal. Right, then there's safety and subject matter. Uh, since this game has a lot of heavy themes, uh, for example, violence, um, we should talk about that. Um, violence is one central part and sexuality is another. Uh, and if, uh, if this makes us uh, uncomfortable, we should uh, consider playing another game. Uh, but since we've all agreed to play this game, uh, uh, I assume we are okay with it. Um, to help us create a safe gaming environment, um, we have a safety tool. Uh, and you could use whichever safety tool you like, but I've brought uh, with me uh, one that I prefer, which is called Traffic Lights. And there is a physical version, which is uh, a card which has two sides. One side that is green and the other side is uh, yellow and red. Uh, so on the left side of our uh, table here, we have a traffic light and it works like this. When another player does something that you, uh, that you like or if uh, your character is really miserable and you're, you as a player are not and you want to show that I like what's going on, you can just grab the green circle and wave it around in the middle. Hmm. Uh, snag if, it? Yeah. Uh, snag. Hmm. If you happen to, uh, if you find yourself uh, approaching a boundary of yours and you feel that uh, we should continue in that direction, you can uh, grab the yellow one and wave it around. And uh, you don't have to explain why, uh, but just, uh, just make us uh, understand what it is that we should shy away from. Um, and the last one, the red dot, uh, when, you, when you feel that 
you we've passed your boundaries you suddenly find yourself oh i don't i need uh, to take a break now uh you just drop it in the middle and we'll take a five minute break and then we'll uh get back and try to see how we can continue yeah. uh, also if there is anyone who wants to signal or, or say a boundary that they have beforehand uh, that we should avoid in game uh, we well for for example homophobia slavery rape child abuse or violence against women's uh, women is uh, subjects that might occur so if there's any one of those that you would like to avoid in our game you, you can say so now uh, we have a line against sexual violence on the channel so that would take rape off the table um I think, I think, um, casual non-narrative violence again, like I don't, I actually don't like normally violence against children, especially is something I would, I would maybe take out the table. I think equivalently what I'm trying to name is a veil here. Like if you're going to do it, like, let's make sure we're exploring an actual idea and not just do it casually, um, which I think the tone kind of covers a lot of, mm. a lot of that anyways. Um, but um yeah that's that's one yeah. for me thank you for sharing that yeah i feel like i relate to a lot of those just as veils as a person right like the way that i will probably yeah. like i don't have a strong desire to need to act out any of those things while i recognize that they're topics that will come up it's like great that's a thing that yeah. has happened over here or Mm. And that's so it's not like a hard line for me, but it's definitely like something that probably I would just put in. Like even most of those, I, I would probably. Yeah. Maxwell, you're not you're not interested in in role playing child abuse. What's wrong with you? You know, it yeah. just doesn't sound <laughs> like a great time. Yeah. You're so sensitive. So, <laughs> um, <know>. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a uh, that's Quinn getting into character. Um, the. Uh, uh, yeah, no, and I also, I liked when the tone, what it said about, like, is it, it covered something we talked about right before we went live, like, if we're joking around or if there's funny stuff, I think that's okay. I think the conversation is, like, how are we displaying the interior reality of why that joke is happening is is what makes this game interesting. And so, um, uh, so yeah, I think I think that, I mean, that's, I think that's, the, that's I think, the other thing I want to maybe highlight. Maybe that's a little bit more of what I'm trying to do there um, rather than say limits um yep yeah okay um great uh another thing that we should acknowledge is that children in this game they are not uh they are neither men nor women they don't uh, fall under the rules of men and women so they they don't have any rules uh and uh, they are allowed to be just children um but children uh, since it is such a uh, an important part of this of this setting uh, children should still be around, but we should just know that uh, while they are children, they do not uh, fall under the rules that men and women have. Cool. All right, that is the, the that is the first part. We've set the expectations. Now we should uh, have a look at our character sheets. Uh, I've give I've put up four of them. Uh, choose a corner that you like. <laughs> uh, I can go I'll for the one here, at the I guess. bottom right. Uh, I will write Peter's corner here in that in that box. There. Uh, okay. Great. Okay, where you, where you could just. The next step. Oh, Tony, you just you oh. happened to move the. I, I thought I, I thought I locked them. Yeah, I, I had the wrong thing selected. Here we go. Uh, no worries. Uh, we when we have found our character sheet and our little corner, we should create. Uh, a name for our character and down at the uh, in the right corner of our table we have a document that you can uh, switch to page three of and that has some location names and some character names 
So see if there's anything you like. A male name and a nickname that belongs to that man. How do I how do I select it to look at it more closely again? Um, what do you mean? It's, uh, it's a little pixelated on my screen. I'm trying to remember how to. Uh, actually, it it, it usually um, becomes clear when you zoom in a bit. Uh, um, I will do that. There I got it. Yep, it happened. Good. I feel like it's impossible for me to pick names that have a the in the middle without going with like full alliteration. Like it, how? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of like a properly mm, thematic way to say that I gamble. Dice roller, bone roller. Um. Well, you could just use Gambler. That hey, works. You know what? We'll keep it. Is Fool too judgmental? <laughs> I don't know if this is the game to worry about that one. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to take me like a, like a long time to just ease <laughs> into being a jerk. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's see here. Yeah. So we have the last character left. Maybe the dice thrower. How about that? Yep. Uh, when you've written your name uh, on your character sheet, you can add the other characters' names uh, under the male relationships list. Uh, Sigurd the dice thrower. No. Okay. Uh, let's see. Sigurd. Bra Bra Am I going to assume correctly that Gunner the Godless does not, in fact, believe in gods? You know, I haven't decided whether it's does not believe in gods or has been, like, abandoned by them. Boy. Both could be true, I suppose. Yeah. Fair enough. That sounds cool. Tony, are you satisfied? Um, I don't know. Um, I'm not yet. <laughs> keep on going back and forth. Uh, but we can keep on moving forward while I think about it. Okay. Uh, we'll, I will just write down uh, Roar in that case. Um, right. So um, when you have the three other characters on your male relationships list, you, uh, without putting too much thought into it, you uh, mark two of them as I look up to him and one as I look down upon him.
<laughs> one you look up to, two you look down on? Uh, no, the other way around. Two you look up to, one you look down on. Yep. I feel like I copied your homework. <laughs> are you are you stealing my little circles? No, I, I, oh. my my sheet looks the same as uh, Thorn the fair haired over here. Uh, <laughs> oh, we had the exact. Oh well, uh, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Um, so now uh, when we have marked who we look up to and look down upon, we go around the table and we say which characters uh, our character looks up to. And whenever your character is mentioned, you take one honor and you put it into your little corner. Um, Are there red dots honor? Is that the... Yes. Great. That is true. So uh, who wants to start? Gunner, the godless, perhaps. Yes, sure. I uh, I look up to Thord and Roar and uh, look down upon Sigurd. Cool. I will put... Let's see. I will put one for... Tony in their in his corner here. Uh, here we go. This is a fun. This is a fun way to do it. I do like this this Miro thing. I like popping little things and moving them around. We played a couple Miro board games. They're they're enjoyable. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's the most uh, um, well purposeful tool that we've found so far. Uh, how about you, Tony? Uh, who does Roar look up to? Um, I look up to Seagard, or Seagar and Thord, and I look down on Gunnar. Okay. For all the reasons. Seagard? Yeah, for all the reasons. <laughs> so I put honor in each other in, in the honor in the spots of the people I look up to. Is that correct? Oh, uh, I've done it so far, but okay. uh, you should really take it yourself okay uh, so i've let's see yeah we've had two so far so this is right okay uh sigurd what about what about you i look down upon gunner the godless um and i i look up to roar the wet-footed and thor the fair-haired mm-hmm mm-hmm and Thord. The fair-haired, he looks up to Gunner and Roar. Uh, did you grab the... Did you grab the honor tokens? I feel there are some miss... Let's yeah, Max, see. you need one, don't you? I do need one. Here, I grab. Yeah. Just the one. Roar and, and everybody Thor. everybody wants to be Thord. <laughs> what a Thord the word. I mean, I, let's see. Tony, Tony, you should have another token. Yeah, I think so. Uh, so I, 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 I three, no? Let's see. All of you look up to me, so I have three. Yeah. Uh, and there's only one who looks up to Sigurd. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, Seems that way. And only one who looks up to Gunner as well. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, so that's that's right. So now we get a <laughs> um, we get a hint of who these characters are. Uh, apparently, Thord has some kind of uh, uh, some has more power than the others. Um, but next step is to choose a couple of traits. Um, there are two columns of traits, and you should choose four or five, whichever you want. Uh, but you should at least choose one from each column. Mm. 
I am done. Okay, are we done? Yep. Cool. So now we can we can uh, go around the table one more time and we say what traits we have chosen. And for each trait that you have chosen in the left column, you take one honor. Uh, I can start. Uh, Thor the Fairhaired, uh, he is married to a woman. He knows the law. He has so no sexual interest in women, uh, and he has a feeble child. Gunner, you can continue. Yeah, uh, Gunner has battle scars and owns land. Uh, also has no sexual interest in women and fears death. Right. <laughs> what about Roar? Uh, Roar has, um, uh, has a beautiful daughter. Uh, he owns land. He knows the law. Uh, he knows how to practice. Um, I'm going to mispronounce it if I just do it off the top of my head. Magic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> is that, uh, Sager? Uh, Sager. 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 Uh, it's, it's flipped. <laughs> say, tell me, tell me, teach me, teach everyone watching right now. Um, uh, so, yeah, and, and then I've broken up with some of my relatives. <laughs> awesome. So you get three honor from your traits. Uh, and then there's Sigurd. Mm -hmm. I own land. I know the law. I fear death and I am in considerable debt. Okay, cool. Maybe. Maybe I should switch. I know the law because you all took it, so I can perhaps have. Perhaps I have uh, battle scores instead. Mm. And is are, I'm I'm guessing since because uh, they aren't listed this way, are is one column honorable and one column dishonorable actions? Um, well, one of them is uh, typically ma or manly traits, right? And the other is yes. unmanly, like within the so context of the culture. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, practicing magic was something that uh, Odin did practice magic, but that was like he was a god, so I guess that's okay. But otherwise, that's not something a man should do. Uh, very good. We have uh, we have um, come so far. Now it's time to create a couple of wants. We should each have one want to one of the other uh, characters. And on page 10 in the um, in the playtest document, there are a couple to choose from. Mm -hmm. uh, so you take one of the other uh, characters uh, and whether you look up to them or you look down upon them, you choose from that list. Um. 
I supposed to write this down? I was just going to like write it next to the character on the... Yeah, it, there is a line at the very bottom of the character sheet that says, I want. And what, um, what page is that on in the document? Uh, number 10 um, in the document. But we need one per character, right? So we're picking three wants? No, just one. Uh, one so want for one other character. Good. Yeah. Oh, OK. All right. Uh, let's see. Yep. Uh, I want to. Uh, I want to explain to Gunnar what happened. Uh, we don't know what that is yet, but we'll figure it out. I don't like this one, but I'm going to do it. Uh, I think I want to put Seeger in his place. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Again, going against my better judgment. <laughs> uh, I want to keep Gunnar safe. Mm. Just we. Oh, but that means that nobody has a want for Thord. Uh, well, I'm not sure it's a big problem. I will get kind of drawn into the mess anyway, I, I presume, because uh, I don't own land, so I will live on one of the other farms that you own. Uh. Uh, so I'm thinking that Thord lives at uh, Gunnar's farm. So I, I, th I think that will, that will work anyway. Right, so we've uh, done our wants. We should now create this little relationship map that we have in the middle of the table. Uh -huh. uh, there are four locations that we should begin by naming. Uh, there is there's one location where laws are made and debts are settled. There's one where hard work is done and livelihoods are eked out. Uh, there are uh, There's one where adventures begin and farewells are said. And the last one is where gods are beseeched and sacrifices are made. Uh, I'm thinking perhaps we should uh, we should remove one of these locations because we don't have that much playtime. So we I think it's better if we just uh, st stick to three farms. Okay. Uh, is there one location that you feel less for that you? I think. Uh, yeah? Personally, I think the one about adventures beginning and ending. Uh, yep. seems like the one to cut. All right. They, they all sound so good, but yeah, I think uh, I think that makes sense to me also, too. All right. So I will uh, remove that one. Great. Now we should create names for these locations. And there is um, a location... Location name uh, generator, or so to speak, uh, you uh, match up a prefix with a suffix, uh, and you get a you get a name, uh, and it's at the third page of the cheat sheet. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I will just I will just pick one to get things started. Hestaholar. Um, that that's one. Uh, that's where hard work is done. The horse hills. Um. Then... I would all uh, Akrabaki, which would be the where the field meets the riverbank, I guess, because it's field riverbank. Yep. Um, and uh, I actually, where the gods are beseeched and sacrifices are made, I like the idea of that, kind of this, yeah. uh, this threshold space. 
Sounds like that could be where your character is living as well. Yeah, I think so. Um. And where? Oh no, I did that. I I think about one, and then I wrote one. Um. Maybe double check on the spelling there. Yeah, that's what I figured. Yeah, uh, Sator, um, smoke, smoke place, smoke site, um, <laughs> yeah. where laws are made and debts are settled. Cool. So mystical. I love it. <sighs> yeah. Let's see then. Uh, who of us have have chosen the trait I own land? I did. That's all of you, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's all of you, but Thord. Yeah, so you just pick one of these farmsteads uh, that is yours. And I will live wherever Gunner lives. Uh, I, I'm going to snag Akabaki if that's fine with you, Tony. That's fine with me, yeah. All right. I do not know the law, so I don't. I, I don't feel like uh, where where laws are made and debts are settled. I'll, I mean, uh, I'll, yeah, I'll take I'll take uh, the that one. <laughs> say, <laughs> say, say it out loud for me, someone. Reykjavik. Reykjavik every time. Yeah. Reykjavik. Reykjavik. Hestaholar is mine. Right. It's where we live. Um, Makes sense. I don't like laws or gods, so uh, you can. Uh, if you you see, there are these uh, small squares that says PC man, NPC man, and NPC child and NPC woman. Uh, mm -hmm. If you take one of them and you let's see, I think it's Alt. Uh, yeah, it's Alt. Yeah, if you hold down Alt uh, and you move it, you make a copy. Uh, so you can put yourself in there and you just change the name to your name. Oh, the PC one disappeared. Uh, yeah. I will make a copy. <laughs> uh, I will put one for the you there and then I will put one over here again. Thor is the default man. <laughs> Okay. Right, then it's time to create a couple of women. Uh, we should each create one woman. And if we have a woman stated uh, in our traits, that is a good uh, woman to create. Uh, Thor is married to a woman, so I want to create his wife. Um, And creating women is a bit of a, um, it has a procedure. So you can just start by putting in the uh, NPC woman um, box, and then you change her name to something that you find fitting. Uh, Thord's woman is called Astrid. What do we do with these wants here? Um, I will get to that. Um, okay. So if you, if you just change the name into something you like, I will tell you what the rest is about. Um, each woman should have a, uh, a want. And normally when you play this at a real table, the want is written on the back of her card. Um, mm. But now we have it. Uh, we have it here visible to everyone. That's because it's supposed to be secret knowledge that only one person knows, or yeah, uh, it's it's supposed to be like you 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 as a man can't see what that woman wants right. most in life, uh, uh, unless you uh, when you portray her. Um, so I, I think it's that effect. I'm not I'm not sure, but I, I really like the feeling of it. Um, mm -hmm. so I like should say that. Not them later like pretend we don't see this right yeah it, it does it doesn't really really matter i think but um that's the way it usually is uh, anyway the want is something that she wants most in life and it should not be related to anything 
uh, to anything um, about the men. It's something that she wants uh, regardless of uh, of the men. So that is the only restriction. Can I swear? I'm gonna swear. I feel like swearing is. You're allowed. Yeah, we uh, we theoretically operate at like a intended PG-13 level, which means as many shits and dams and hells as you want. But you know, if you're gonna use Whenever you drop the f bomb, you got to make sure it really matters. Um, and then, but also, like fifty percent of our players never remember that or just don't. Okay. It's whatever. <laughs> I'll just put f instead of actually. I'll just I'll transition <laughs> to using f. I have been scolded many a time in professional settings for my uses of curse words, oh, and man, have learned right? no lessons apparently. So. Um, all right, let's see here. Uh, oh, that's cool. Uh, so Astrid, she wants to have influence over over the farm, Hesta Um And Sieve, she wants to be left. Uh, she wants to be left alone. All right. Uh, Un wants to be harbor master. That's cool. And. Saga wants to leave this place. Cool. Now we uh, it's time for the reputations. Um, so you take one of the other characters or the, the other women that's not the one you created, and you write one reputation for her. And that is something that people think about her. Uh, it could be... Like if you, if you have trouble coming up with with something, uh, you can think, "What does my man uh, the my man think about her?" Or what does people, what how, what's the talk? Uh, it hasn't. It is not the way that she actually has to be, uh, but it's what people say about her. Hmm. Are we and, only doing one other? Or are we filling out like? Yeah, we're filling out all of them. So when you've done, uh, when you've filled in one reputation, you move over to another one, and you fill in a reputation on that one. Uh, but you don't fill in the reputation of the one you created. Spell the words I'm trying to write out. We are fucking scared of Astrid. <laughs> These men are absolutely quaking in They're their boots. Terrified. <laughs> but Astrid. Of who they think Astrid is. Oh wow. Uh, what what is dupl duplicity? Like deceitful, like faced. what? Like two faced. Okay. <laughs> I can also, if it's easier, I can also put like deceitful. Deceitful would be the other. All right. No, that that's fine. Untrustworthy. But yes, I guess we all are scared of her. <laughs> All right, so that's it. Uh, so Astrid is duplicit, duplicitous, canny, and dangerous. Uh, Saga is opinionated, ungrateful, and strong as an ox. Un is nosy, beautiful, and strong-willed. Ah, I missed a uh, letter. I got it. Thanks. Uh, and see one, uh, she's selfish, aloof, and witty. Uh, what does aloof mean? Um, uh, cold, um, personality-wise. Um, keeps yourself very much at a distance. Okay, yep. 
Perfect. Uh, you should now, you should also, um, the ones that you have blood relationships to, you should uh, mark, uh, you should make an arrow from your character to that oh. character. Uh, so, yeah, marriage is considered a uh, blood re relation. Um... I mean, the smallest arrow, which makes it impossible to label. Let me see. Okay, here we go. Yeah, it's Sweet. pretty cramped that has the whole art. It looks terrible, but that's just how it is. Astrid is my sister. All right. Oh, fuck. How do I leave? No! <laughs> that's awesome. Um, okay. Uh, so, Un hasn't got a uh a blood relationship yet but that's that's fine we can we'll yeah, see she's we she's just like a servant yep um so now it's time for to create some children um because i think we at least i have a feeble child uh is, is there anyone else who has a child of some sort no you I, yeah i, I had uh, a beautiful i have a beautiful daughter but i went ahead and made them in a an adult woman is that fine I, I, yep that's okay that's perfectly fine um, my child's name is uh, his name is Ulf there we go. Uh, son. Okay. So that's that. Uh, there's not anyone who has broken up with their relatives or something like I that. I broke up with my relatives. Yeah. Right. So we should create a relative to personify like the ones you have split up with. It could be that it is someone who I'm thinking about Un. If she perhaps has a man, uh, he, she, she's married to a man who is your... Sure. Who who uh, who you have broken up with for for some reason? Okay. Mm. Just to get her a bit more uh, connected. Connected. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um. Uh, sure. Let's. Um. Uh, is does it matter what the relation? I mean, I know we need to define it. Are there certain types of relationships that are are more important than others? Um, well, no, uh, as, as long as they're blood relationships, okay. uh, it's fine. Well, it, it could be Un's father as well. Um, that's another idea. Hmm. Maybe um. perhaps Eric is, uh, I don't know, like my business partner or something. Yeah. That sounds great. Yeah. Okay. Let's just boop, 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 boop. Mm -hmm. These maps always get so messy with all the error errors and uh, the I boxes. love it. Yeah, it, it, at least it's better than when you write it on a, a regular piece of paper, because <laughs> yeah, you always have to throw away the first one you did and, and kind of do it all over. Uh, 
I think this will be great, actually. I'm enjoying this a lot so far. Right. Good. Yeah, I feel like I've done really this. So, I've I've done this so many times now. So uh, when you uh, you like start to uh, think about oh what haven't I done yet and uh, stuff like that. Uh, okay, so uh, Eric is Roar's uncle, and Uns uh, his daughter. Perfect. Uh, we don't have to have the business partner arrow actually because you're not blood related. Uh, so we can just leave that out. But we know that that's the case. Um, uh, should I blood connect myself to Un as like a family member also too? Then I guess theoretically, or not? Is it only? Are we only tracing like one to one blood relations? Yeah, it's enough to just do uh, do one because yeah. you're also. In this game, when you have broken up with your relatives, you are not really blood related anymore. Um, so that's kind of a way to uh, split up families and uh, and so on. So ah, much better. you you can leave it at that. Uh, that's that's good. So now we've created another man, which is called Eric. So we add him to the male relationships list, but we don't have to. Uh, specify whether we look up, look up, or look down upon him yet, uh, because mm, that will, okay. we'll see that when we play. Uh, good. Have we created all the characters that we need? Then uh, we can always create new characters later on, later on if we need to. Uh, but this is just to have some kind of base to start playing off. Yeah, this seems good to me. Yeah. So now uh, it is time for the break. Um... Cool. We're going to take just a five-minute break. Let us get up, stretch, uh, refill, beverages, anything like that that we want to do. If you're out there watching right now and you want to take a short little break, just treat yourself to whatever. Um, go ahead and do that also, too. You can do it whenever you want, though. Nobody's going to see. It's just, you know, it's our little secret. Um, uh, also, we're going to be back uh, So at about, uh, about five after the hour. We'll just go ahead and make it. Um, five after the hour, we'll all come back. Um, we are playing Blood Feud uh, by Black Fisk Publishing. Um, we are just finished our setup for the game, character creation, kind of created our village. It's a game that explores power, honor, and what they cost uh, in the realm of toxic masculinity. So we're going to come back and play through the next little bit. It's live on Kickstarter right now at the link right down below us. So go check that out uh, if you want to while we are on this break. And we will be right back. As soon as I find the where my mouse is, and <laughs> then, it's uh, there somewhere. Then the right back sign, and then I'm gonna pop it up, and then I'm gonna mute us.
And we are back live here on Plus One oh. EXP's Roll for Content channel. We are playing Blood View today, which is an exploration of power, honor, and what they cost. Looking at some of the core themes of toxic masculinity within, um, uh, well, within, you know, culture. Um, but specifically through a, a lens of Viking storytelling game. Uh, it's published by Black Fisk. It's live on Kickstarter right now. It's very well funded, uh, but uh, could always use some more backers. Um, you can go back then uh, if you want. Uh, there's a link right down below. You can go check it out. TTRPG.link slash bloodfeudks will take you right to their Kickstarter. And if you're on Kickstarter and you want to go over and look at Repugnant, our game also too that's live right now, you can do that. But uh, for sure, go check out Blood Feud. Um, we've done our basic setup for the game. We've created our characters. Um, we've kind of established what our our um, uh, settlement. That's not right. Our what where the, our our place we live looks like. <laughs> and some of the NPCs, um, and uh, now we're we're gonna kind of get a little bit more into the meat of the game. Yes, that's right. So we have our three farmsteads, we have our characters and some relationships, and now we are going to have a look at the rules. But Because since this is a, a GM-less game, everybody has to have a look, uh, or everybody has to have uh, some, some knowledge about how the game works, uh, because we will all help each other out with this. Uh, so we should, first of all, I should explain the the overall um narrative authority or the the style uh, that this game is based on uh, we call it narrative freedom which means that you're free to uh to introduce kind of whatever um all all players have equal authority over the the fiction uh however when when i say that um I walk up to you and I grab your arm. You can say that, like when you uh, when you approach me, you can um, you can um, um, you can introduce an obstacle by saying, as you walk up to me, my my bodyguard stands in your way, uh, hands at their weapon. Um, so that is one thing that you can do. You can interrupt the others if you introduce an obstacle. Uh, you could also in, uh, interrupt someone when they're narrating. Uh, if you want to add a detail or a description, like uh, we're in the the uh, we're in the long house, uh, I can jump in and add uh, crows are uh, cawing outside and the rain patters on the roof, for example. Uh, so that's the basic concept. Is is it more or less clear? Yeah. So it's probably easiest if we kind of state, just so that we don't get a lot of talk over, to state intent and then just give a pause. And then if nobody jumps in, then we can yeah. continue with the, the next little bit. Excellent. Right. Um, so, um, however, uh, as we narrate things, uh, as we say that things happen, um, when we when our characters do something that falls under the description of a move, then uh, we pause and we have a look at what, what that move means. Um, so there are seven moves in the game, and you can find them down in, on the cheat sheet uh, at the, uh, in the bottom right corner. Uh, let's see. I'll just jump into the document here. Right. So um, the moves are sharing someone's bed, which means having sex with someone. Um, e different things happen if you have sex with a man and if you have sex with a woman. Um, so there are some different outcomes when, you, when this happens. Uh, we should note that this is a move that often tr triggers off camera. So at the end of a scene where we've kind of established that this is going to happen. Um, so, uh, but that is the only move that triggers off camera. Uh, giving someone a gift is a, another move. And when, uh, when someone does that, you, you can, most of the moves can be objected to. 
So because these are power moves, and when someone objects uh, and won't let you take that power, that's when interesting things start happening. So giving someone a gift is a pretty harmless thing, uh, but someone can object and say that this this is not a gift. This is uh, this is not a gift worthy uh, for me. Um, so that's the, in order to object to a move, you have to you have to escalate, which is another 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 move. Um, we'll get to that later, but so just so you know, uh, often when you when you want to object to, to a move that someone else does, you you will have to uh, object uh, by escalating. Um, right, commenting on a, on a woman's appearance is another one. Um, it's uh, it's different if you do it in public or if you do it in private, because uh, if you do it in private, the the woman decides if you gain honor or not. Uh, if you do it in public, you always gain honor unless someone escalates. Um, Praising someone is uh, another move. That means like you say good things about the other uh, characters. You could praise yourself or, or you can praise another man. Um, and in that case, you object by insulting them instead. Uh, and if when you insult someone, uh, you can insult someone that is present, another man that is uh, present in the scene, or you can ins insult someone that is not present. Uh, and honor will shift regardless. Um, and then there are the th the the two sp special moves, so to speak, uh, which is escalating and striking a deadly blow. They're tightly connected. But as you as you've seen, uh, in order to object to a move, you have to escalate. But you can also escalate without any other move before. But the the normal thing is that uh, people get angry when they are insulted or um or stuff like that uh and uh on the other moves you you gain honor or you take honor from the other uh, characters uh, or you take it from the pool um the move states w which it is um but when you escalate that's when you need your honor uh, the honor tokens that you have so in order to escalate, you have to pay honor into a conflict pool in the middle of the table. So uh, when I speak up for myself and, uh, and get into someone's face, for example, uh, I put one honor token in the middle of the table and then the, the conflict is on. So then it is up to the other character on the other side of the conflict to either escalate back or yield um, if they escalate back, they take one of their honor and they put it into the pool. And whichever um, stays uh, stays the longest, they get all the honor in the pool that we've paid so far. Um, so it's kind of a betting situation. You can also you can also strike a deadly blow, uh, which is the last option, so to speak. Um, if you strike a deadly blow, that means you kill the other character. And you can always do that. Uh, however, the the other character also has the opportunity to strike a deadly blow back. Um, so people can die pretty fast in this game if, uh, if, if, if blows are being struck. And when you strike a deadly blow, you simply say, I kill you. And you don't need any honor to do it, and you won't gain any honor, but at least the other character won't gain any other e honor either because they will be dead. Uh, and when that happens, uh, a blood feud uh, begins. So that is why we have called the game this because that is kind of the extreme of this whole situation. Um, right, but we'll get into that when, when we get there or if we get there, we'll see. One last thing that you should know before we begin is the scene framing procedure, which is quite uh, specific. Uh, you can find it on page two of the cheat sheet. Um, you, you always begin by stating the intention of the scene, the intention that you have as a player. I want to see what, um, I want to see what Thor and Astrid's relationship looks like. Um, 
that's a valid intention. Or I want to uh, I want to ask um, uh, Eric about um, this whole uh, situation. But just so that every player is on uh, is in on what's uh, the focus of the scene. Uh, then we decide when the scene takes place in um, in relationship to the uh, in relation to the other scenes that have been. We can't in this game do flashbacks because uh, we need to know how much honor they have at that moment. And on if if we jump back, they would have had something else. So uh, you can always have a scene that is uh, after. You can always have a uh, you can only have a scene that is after the ones that were previous. Uh, you also choose a location, and uh, as long as we are able, we should just skip. Uh, we should just stick to the three locations that we have. Um, that is perfectly fine. Uh, if we need another location, we can uh, we we could make that up. But I haven't actually needed to uh, this far. And then it's time to assign characters. Um, we always play our own. Uh, characters that we've created, uh, but the the women, for example, and the other NPCs will have to be played by someone. And you, as this scene initiator, you uh, you say a character's name, and you say who plays that character. Uh, so, for example, uh, if I want a scene with Gunner, I say, uh, let's see. Uh, Max, you play Gunner. And when I say that, you continue by saying what Gunner does as the scene starts, uh, like a sentence or so. Uh, so we kind of build up the picture together, what's uh, what the scene is like in the beginning. And I, we should try to aim to not playing uh, several characters at the same time, because it's kind of... Uh, Kind of hard, uh, but if we need to, we need to. Um, and a very, very important thing is that there has always got to be one woman in each scene, because in this game we're not interested in what happens in the presence or in the um, when when women are not present, uh, because that is not public enough. Women are kind of the the. the um, they uh, represent the uh, the society, uh, and we are only interested in what happens when they are present. Uh, and that is even to the extent that when a woman leaves the scene, and that is the last woman, there's no more women in the scene, the scene ends. Um, <laughs> so uh, a woman can, can just get angry and leave the scene, and that's it. Unless uh, the men will... Um, do some even more creepy behavior and like follow them and not let them leave the scene. So that is a thing to to remember. And when you have introduced the other characters that you want in the scene, you introduce your own character in the same way. Uh, and when you have said what your character does at the scene ends, we all know that, all right, the scene is um the scene is on and then we play it out Boop. any questions before we get to it i don't think so let's Good. roll yeah and uh, let's see here both both uh, Thord and Roar have the same amount of honor, am I right? Correct. Because it is the uh, the player with the most honor who, who gets to begin. Why don't you, since you uh, since you are the designer of the game and you know exactly what you're doing, why don't you go first? <laughs> yeah, that is uh, an honorable position to be sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that's fine. Uh, okay, so I want, let's see here. Um, I want a scene at Hestaholar where we kind of see what Thord and Gunner's uh, relationship is like. Um, and there's also this, this situation that 
uh, I have this want uh, to explain something to you, um, something that happened, and I'm not sure what it is yet. So maybe we will we will see what that is. Um, yeah. And um, so this is, maybe this is winter. The There's uh, snow all over the, over the place and we we're kind of, uh, I'm thinking that we, there's not really much to do outside. So people are much indoors and they get on each other's nerves. Uh, and, <laughs> That's a good place to start. Uh, it's at Hesta Holar, and <clears throat> Max, you play Gunner. Shocking. Uh, yeah. <laughs> great. I think so. I'm setting up what like Gunner is like doing. Yeah. What do we see him? Space. What do we see him doing as the scene starts? Yeah, I think probably Gunner is like. A little bit irritated uh, with the close quarters, and so like is doing, is gonna do like a round of the property to make sure that like the winter has not in fact damaged anything. I don't know how to farm, but I assume <laughs> that a thing that has to happen with farming is like I'm gonna go and make sure that like there's been no damage to this barn or like what like I'm doing a a, a round of checks to kind of like get a little fresh air. You're checking, like checking the stores to make sure that mice yeah. and crows and other things have not gotten in. Yeah, or... like mice haven't gotten into it or whatever. Um, yeah. And that's great. <clears throat> Let's see then. Um, um, I was thinking about... of taking Civ. Yeah, um, I think, um, Quinn, you could play Civ then. I think I, I actually think it'd be interesting if this was actually like Siv's way of getting out of the house, and then like Gunnar like, was like, "Oh yeah, I'll go with you." Yeah, you're. Oh, what does she do when the scene starts? Um, I feel like I feel like she's trying. She's just trying really hard to think of a way to get Gunnar to check a different part of the property she's like i'll check the fence bro you you do the house or something like that just please all right cool um and how about uh tony you play astrid okay um i think uh astrid is uh with Thord, um, like as um, like essentially following him, and it's it's a it's more of a canny observance of what is happening, the like the comings and goings of this thing. Like uh, Astrid doesn't have particular desire to be here, other than to make sure that Astrid uh, knows what is happening on the farm and uh, and is aware of the ins and outs of everything. So. Uh, she is there seemingly in the context of being, of just, you know, being with Thord, but really is paying attention to um, uh, this interaction um, and looking for, uh, just kind of noting what's what's happening. Right. Uh, and so there's uh, Thord, who, who's walking uh, besides, uh, beside Astrid um, over to... Uh, over to Gunner, who's uh, uh, yeah, wh wherever you are. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Gunner, can I have a word? Uh, yeah, just uh, just let me finish this. I want to like pack up a bunch of stuff that I'm working on, presumably. Of of course, of course. Um, Astrid, what? Um, what is it? What was it? I'm thinking about the 
the storage. Um, and we kind of, we, we need to figure something out uh, because the storage has been, the storage has been destroyed. Um, we all know that. Uh, there, I don't know if there was a mold in, in, the, in the grain or whatever happened, but uh, we need to solve that somehow. And you're, you're a smart and beautiful woman. You, you, what do you think? I mean, you know, um, I, it, I am just here to, to, to help. I mean, what, you know, if you, if you, if you have an idea, I, I'm sure Gunnar would absolutely know how to handle this. I mean, but I thought he hired you to help with these kind of things. Oh yes, of course. Um, we we will fi fi we will figure it out. Uh, so Gunnar, um, what do you what do you want me to do with the with this whole situation? We have the the moldy green, and uh, what now? Yes, Gunnar. What now? I mean, I think we're probably going to have to find a new source. And while it, I don't want to ask for help. I would rather we figured out how to solve this ourselves, obviously. But I think that probably with our stores having gone rotten, we're going to have to replenish them somehow. I would, I, I don't, obviously, I don't think that we should be asking Sigurd for any kind of help. Like their farm seems to have been going iffy at best. Uh, but. It just, it just seems like, you know, the person in charge should have planned for this eventuality. I couldn't agree more, Astrid. I mean, I, I think it's impossible to have planned for poor and rotten stock. I mean, Sib, Sib, didn't you say something earlier this year about hanging things rather than just leaving them on the ground? You know, Astrid, now that you mention it, I do think I did say something like that, but no one ever listens to me. Are you some, are you incapable of lifting things off of the floor yourself? It's less that I'm not capable and more that it shouldn't be expected. No, well, if, if, enough of this. Uh, Gunnar, I, uh, since I was the one who put the grain in there, I will take responsibility for, for this. I, I, I will find a way somehow. Um, but we need to we need to, I think we need to talk to to Sigurd. Astrid, what it's it's your brother. What do you think? Will he accept? Will he help us? I mean, we can always ask. He's usually going to want something in exchange. I mean, what are what do we have to offer him in order to make this easy for him to agree to? I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't like it either. I, I, I don't like it. Um, but I see no other choice. I mean, he keeps on complaining about not having quite enough, you know, space for, for his farm. Um, and, you know, you might be able to work out something with him for the next planting season where he we can let him use some of the land that was lying fallow for a few more years on our property. We're on the property. I'm going to let Sigurd use our land. Yeah, I was going to say, know. as if I'm going to let that sniving, fickle creature have any space here. That's insulting someone. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> so when we uh, when we see that we we've, we've made a move, uh, we we have a look at it. So you you insulted someone that was not present. Yes. Which means you you gain an honor from from the bag, which is the the pool um, right. here. I guess unless somebody's and, um, unless someone uh, escalates. But I'm since women can't escalate. Um, that was so, that, that was one of my immediate questions. My assumption is that women have no power to trigger a move, and therefore exactly uh, uh, there are some moves that they respond to, but that's it. 
Yeah, exactly. They they can, for example, insult someone, uh, but it doesn't trigger the insult move. Uh, however, if uh, uh, yeah, uh, w women can do whatever they want, um, regardless of uh, of the moves. So um, I think you uh, the way you've played it so far is is great. Okay. Um, awesome. So. Well, where were we? <laughs> um, somebody, somebody had just uh, 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 Gunnar just insulted. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I am loath to allow him any access more than is uh, more than is entirely necessary for our survival. He is also the one who we got this grain from, and I'm not entirely convinced that it wasn't his. Uh, his stocks that got us into this problem. So I think we should probably look elsewhere for assistance. Astrid, how how long is this going to last? The this, the situation between uh, us and Sigurd is it's. It, I mean, I'm just so tired of it. Why can't we get along? I mean, I. I know my my brother. I understand my brother. Um, I am, you know, uh, I I understand his his ills and his goods. Um, it is it's not my place to resolve your problems. If you need something from me, ask. Right. I will. I will. Uh... I will go and um, and remove the the moldy grain then. And Gunner, you you will figure figure out how to replace it, I guess. And um, Thor walks away, and uh, that's the end of the scene. Astrid makes a, a knowing look at at Siv. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's the first scene. We got a feel of it about it. Um, mm. They're so short. I was like, "This is gonna go on for." I'm gonna. We're gonna. Grain. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I cannot <laughs> believe you think Seeger's grain is to blame for this. I cannot believe. <laughs> obviously, it. obviously, I do. Maybe if you spent more time paying attention to your crops and less time gambling away all your money. Oh, uh, not this again. <laughs> All right. Um, who is uh, who is next? Um, we could go. Wait. Uh, do we want to do? I mean, is there is there a normal procedure? Is it just you just kind of choose? Because it seems like the narrative would lean us to a scene with Sigurd and Gunnar, right? Um, yeah. We could also move over to something else, um, or if there's a normal procedure for moving around the table, that's fine too. Yeah, we. we I, I normally just go clockwise. Okay. Um, so cool. we could do that. Yeah. Uh, and if there's a good scene to be had between Gunnar and Sigurd, I think that's a great. Well, idea. I think that's where we were headed. Yeah. I <laughs> yeah. agree. Awesome. Great. Good. Awesome. I feel like uh, I guess clockwise means it me, but I think we already know we've done we've done some of these steps ourselves. Yeah. Uh, so I think the intention is probably. Uh, Gunnar's intention here would be either to have the grain replaced or some kind of payback of some variety. Um, oh, uh, yeah, and you want to put Sigurd in his place. So. Yeah, I mean, I guess, cool. I guess this is, I guess this is where we go. Uh, yeah, and so I feel like it's, I mean, when is probably like directly after where we just were, um, since that feels like it makes the most sense. I think we will be going to Akrabaki. We'll like move over to uh, that that farm. Um, Quinn, you can play Seeger. That's for me, yeah, Seeger it is. So I guess what what where where do we find when I guess when we arrive I 
I have a question about order. Do we, is it that I would be saying like, okay, Quinn, you're going to play Sigurd and then Sigurd will tell us what we see and then we assign the next character and they, like we do it yep. in turns? Cool. Oh, BKB. Yep. So me being Sigurd, um, I think if it's that kind of winter where there's just not a lot to do, you know, um, I think, I think the obvious thing is that I'm, uh, I'm probably hanging out uh, in in the in just like the the main living space of of, of my house, and I'm just uh, casually casually tossing some dice with Eric. I think. Cool. Um, so that leaves. So we've got Eric and Un here. So Tony, Peter. Uh, yeah, uh, Max, you, you get to say whoever is in the scene. Um, <laughs> else mm -hmm. so and it's not like who's it's not based on location it's just these are like can pull from like any character pool right yeah definitely wow. it could be that roar happens to be yeah. there for example great um, my bad no no worries we do need um, at least one woman and no one should be playing multiple characters yeah yes. yeah unless uh, we have I, mean, yeah. I think probably uh we can we can switch this up a little bit. I don't want to I don't want to Tony make you the same character over and over again. So uh, I think uh, yeah, I think that Astrid, Peter, if you want to take Astrid, because I feel like maybe we like brought Astrid with us to like uh, like all right. be a little bit of a buffer um, and or sure. to to you know force her to pick sides. <clears throat> So uh, Astrid, um, they, I'm, I'm thinking that there's some distance between these farms. So they, maybe they uh, go by horse there. Uh, and so she's, um, she's getting off uh, her horse and um, dusting her, her clothes off before like getting ready to uh, introduce herself. Um, yeah, and I feel like we should also, for whatever reason, you can tell us why, Tony, I feel like Roar is also there, is, is there when we arrive, or okay. whatever. Nice, instead of Eric. I, yeah, I, I actually, I think, like, Roar, uh, I think the, the thing that Roar really looks up to about Sigurd um, is absolutely, like, the freedom he feels to not worry about material wealth. Uh, and just gamble freely. So I think I'm always down. <laughs> uh, Essentially, to take, like to, take, to take more of his money and increase his debt, not in a malicious way, but also in a malicious way. That's really, I like I like that a lot, as opposed to me just being like, oh, no, no, I don't want to owe you our money. But we're just both like, how much do you owe me now? And I'm like, I don't know. Right. A lot. We'll figure. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry about it. Let's just roll one more time. Yeah, one more time. So, who is it that you're in the in considerable debt to? It's Roar. Oh, it's me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I'm cool. I'm happy to just let that debt keep ticking up and never let him That's out. Funny. But again, it's That's not. Really um, it is 100% a control thing without it being malicious. Like, does that make sense? Yeah. Like, I like the I'm control like, that gives me over him. But it's not like I'm aggressive about it. I'm just anytime he's like, I want to lose more money to you, I'm like, absolutely. <laughs> That's great. Cool. Great. All right. Uh so I think Gunner, like I Gunner is going to start by like like the whole ride there has just been like sitting fuming right like this has just been like building and building as we get closer and closer to the other farmstead of like just how much uh he doesn't respect Sigurd at all and so this is just like an avenue um for all of that to kind of be like funneled into um and will uh start by just like slamming that door open and being like, the grain you sold us has spoiled. How am I not surprised <laughs> that something from you would be spoiled instantly? <laughs> Anger. Table flip. <laughs> okay, ask, uh, so um, Gunnar sa says this when we enter the, when we enter the farm. I think Astrid, 
she, 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 she grabs him by the shoulder and says, oh, dear, Gunner, would you please take it easy? Uh, and she uh, looks over at uh, Sigurd. Brother, I'm sorry for this pity of a display. We have, we do have a problem, though, so we are here to talk about it. I, I look over at Rory because I'm like, because I'm like, oh wait, I got, I got this guy. I gotta, I gotta handle this. I gotta handle this smoothly. Um, so I, I don't just jump at Gunnar as I may otherwise. And I'm like, I'm prepared to forgive you. What, uh, what's, the, what's the problem? What's going on? Astrid looks at Gunnar. Gunnar, if you'd like oh, to say play it again. one more time, now do it properly. I don't remember asking for your forgiveness. <laughs> uh, or start. What I'm asking from you is to fix a problem that you started. I'm not familiar with any of those problems. Perhaps because the list is so long before we get to this one is what you mean. Mm. I, listen, we have been storing grain every year of our lives. It's a regular occurrence. Never before has it spoiled. I feel confident that it has to have been the stock with which we were given and not our own methods. So, certainly, listen, if there were a problem with my stock, then my stocks would have also spoiled. Clearly something happened in transit or maybe, you know, I mean, frankly, if your methods of farming and storing were so good, you would never have needed to buy from me in the first place, no? That's I'm not insult. sure. Isn't it? <laughs> you, you, I, feel like, I feel like this whole thing has been back and forth, so I don't know where the mechanical line is. Um, I, yeah. I will take it as an insult yeah. if that helps. <laughs> Regardless awesome. of its intention, <laughs> I will take it as one. Okay, um, so uh, if you if you take it, uh, I mean, if you don't stand up for yourself by escalating, um, Sigurd just uh, takes one of your honor. No, no, we'll I love an escalation. I feel like okay. I'm human now. Listen, I bought your stock as a favor to your sister, who I have been looking after on my land because somebody doesn't seem capable of taking care of their own family. I, I escalated. I don't actually know how this works. You I'm sure did. Pop, pop another, pop one of your honor into the middle. I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. Think which so. and which popped, one is? That's mine. That's one of mine. Here, I'll put mine over here. They'll stay next yeah. to my my name over here. I don't think it matters. Okay, but we just win. The first the the first insult doesn't require a, any. Honor. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so oh. it's just you're, when you're you initiating. I'm starting the escalation, I guess. And me okay. it, it's a smart me like mechanically that gives you the incentive to to insult because it gives you that one yeah, for yeah. free. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it means I get to punch above my weight just a little. Um, uh, <laughs> you're taking care of my sister, but you're not even married to her. You're having someone else on your land and it's not even your wife. You don't even have a wife. Don't come at me saying, oh, you're taking care of my sister. You're not taking care of my sister, Thor is. That, does that? Uh, so uh, right now when we're in this escalation, if we feel that that wasn't, um, it is, I, I realized that I, I didn't, uh, point out a, a very important thing. And it is, it is that escalations always have to be, uh, immediate and more severe than the previous ones. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you, have, so you actually it, have to go up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so when when an escalation occurs, we will collectively have to decide whether it really felt like an escalation, uh, like it was severe enough uh, compared to what was said previously. Uh, oh, I, I have I have I'm a very I, nice I, person. I do I do feel like the like stab about no wife um, and someone else, like basically trying to undercut the argument and then state a deficit yeah. did feel like an escalation, especially in a a hyper masculine culture. I have a question just totally. Mm. I don't know that I will do it. Can a third person jump in on insulting if they are a player who is in the, in the space? 
uh, they can they can join a, a conflict. And okay. so if if you want to do that, you um, let's see who who are you playing again? I'm Roar. Roar. I'm I am me. And so yeah, right. Okay. So uh, if you want to join in on the conflict and take one of the sides, you uh, you narrate what you do and you put one of the honor into the honor pool. Okay, so you well. can essentially team up, but it is one side or the yeah. other. So if I if I throw it in, I'm throwing it in either for Gunnar or for so you can, like I'm not benefiting from that necessarily. Okay. I, you I you will uh, if 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 there are more than one person on uh, on one side, they split the honor okay. if they win. Okay. Cool. Um, and mm -hmm. then the other question I have is, can numerous mechanics or can numerous moves be happening near simultaneously? Like they would obviously resolve independently, but. Um, yeah, during a conflict, um, we normally um, resolve that before we do any other moves. Okay, cool. But the other moves can pr they are pretty much resolved at the same time uh, unless anyone objects. Okay. So um, I do. I right do have now, a couple it, things I want to do here, but I'm I'm going to let this go yeah. a little bit further. I just needed to ask so I knew when properly to interject. <laughs> okay, cool. But that did feel like an escalation to me, at least. Yep. Hey. Uh, oh jeez. Okay. Um, Gunner. It's me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ast Astrid is, is insult. Astrid is looking at you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, speak up for yourself. God damn yeah. it. Uh, and destroy your brother. This is all very great. Um. Sure. Yeah. I am, I am not the only one who is unmarried, and I wonder what that might mean on this farm, where not only do you have, because, oh no, she's an adult. Damn it, <laughs> damn it. Uh, where you take care of, of old, old, like you've, you've effectively taken in other people's cast-offs, uh, which is not an insult. I don't know, I'm, I'm no. floundering here, guys. <laughs> Look, I'm not good. I'm not good at being a jerk. He says mean uh, things. <laughs> okay, so I I feel like uh, that perhaps wasn't an escalation enough. So yeah. when you've tried something and uh, and and we feel that that wasn't an escalation enough, uh, you and that means that you've yielded. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So the other side gets the honor. I was I was originally thinking that there was a child around and I was gonna say an insulting thing about a child and then I realized that Un is actually like a grown ass. Like I saw a daughter and was like, no, she's a, she's a grown woman. I, I mean, yeah. there there can be like there's no do we have to have created NPCs in advance or can they be brought into being as needed? They can be brought as, they yeah. can be brought in, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you I mean, could you so could have insulted a child, you just would have had to name them and create them at that point in time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. All you, good. You would have had to summon a, an imaginary child out of whole cloth in your mind just for you to insult them. Listen, I get very upset about the wife comment. I like flounder a little <laughs> and then I stomp back out of, uh, and then I stomp back out the door. My honor not intact. Um. So so here is here is here is Roar's move. Uh, since since uh. What, maybe what has Roar been doing? Roar has been watching we having... all this happen with a somewhat like amused, like look on his face, um, and then we'll we'll turn to Astrid and say, um, "Beautiful Astrid, I know that uh, I know it's not your farm, but if you can, uh, if you can speak clearly into the stubbornness of Gunnar, uh, there are there are plenty of fish preserved in my stocks that we would be happy." To uh to help your farmstead through these tough times, uh, if needed, um and I I don't know whether I'm I, I actually think I am complimenting her like I'm I'm praising her, uh, but I'm also offering a gift. So that's why I was asking about simultaneous resolution mechanics and how those things right, interact okay. with each other. Um, so I'm attempting to both to both compliment her beauty and her and her her canniness, uh, and then offer a gift. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, you were comp commenting on her, her appearance, so you gain one honor. Uh, you simply do. And, um, however, uh, yeah. So you were offering her a gift, and now we wanted to see how, whether she accepts it or, or not. Um, so um, she, she, um, Astrid looks at uh, Roar. And Seeger uh, could have theoretically objected when I call when I 
complimented his sister's appearance, but that seems like a weird flex. But I just, just mechanically as a yep. note. I, yeah, I just don't think I could, I think it would be strange to escalate that. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> yeah. Nor am I going to try and stop the gift because frankly, I don't have, I don't, I don't want to give him anything if I don't got it. Yeah. Or wants no. to, wants to be generous. Hey. Uh, Astrid uh, looks at Roar and she sighs. What is it that you want me to tell her? Oh, just that if if food is scarce, that um, I'm I'm happy to provide uh, as needed for uh, for your you know for the largeness of the the farm community over at um, Estohaller. Hmm. And what? Why would you do this? Why would I do this? For us. Why oh. would you do that for us? Why, why would I do it? I mean, there are times where fish is plentiful and there are times where wheat is plentiful and there are times where other things are plentiful. Let's just say that um, the farm will owe me a small debt. <laughs> I like how I've already turned my guy into... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just collect favors from everybody. Viking um, Tom Nook over here. Yeah. Uh, she, <laughs> she smiles at you. That is very generous of you. How, how about you come visit our farm and you bring your fish with us and we'll celebrate your generosity. And I'll make sure that Gunnar, uh, during the time, um, is all very happy about it. How does that sound? That sounds more than appropriate for now. She nods um, and uh, bids farewell and walks out, uh, trying to find where Gunner has gone. <laughs> Gunner is like saddling up. Like we yeah. are, I am fuming off. I am barely cool. like, fine, you're already here. great, let's go. Yep. So that's the end of the scene. Mm. Oh, Jesus. We had our first scene, and I forgot all about the end of scene procedure. Oh, damn it! I'm so. Uh, yeah, uh, forgetful is the word. Um, so let's uh, let's do it retroactively. Um, er after every scene, there is an end of scene procedure, uh, and so you can change and add how we whether you look up to or look down upon someone. Um, that is. Um, so you can just, uh, think about whether, well, me or, me or Gunner, if we, uh, if there happened anything between us in the first scene, but I, I don't think that I, uh, changed the way I look up to him. Um, we, we also update the relationship map if we've added new characters or new relationships. And then the, the ones who played women pick the one who was least manly. Uh, and that is a shame that we forgot about that in the first scene. So does, what is that? What is that? Does that trigger something mechanically or is it just a, yeah, a they lose, they lose one honor. Okay. Uh, or uh, yeah. So uh, you, let's see, uh, Tony and Quinn, you played women in the first scene. Who, who would you say were, were most unmanly in that scene? It's gotta be Gunner. <laughs> In the first right. scene, in the I actually first, in the first scene. In the first scene, I almost feel like it was Thor. Thor kept on deferring to other yeah. people's judgment mm. and asking his no, wife yeah. what he should do, and asking other people what she and doing whatever anybody else wanted. And from the from the standpoint of honor within this culture, I would say Thor. But um, yeah. and then Gunnar. You're right. I was thinking active. too much like who did the actual smart thing, and it was Thor because Thor was clearly playing Gunnar. But that's not how it would be interpreted. Correct. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that it's that's all often uh, the case. That the the smart thing to do is often not the most manly one. Uh, so uh, I I also feel that Thor, uh, Thor lost uh, honor in the first scene. But then uh, let's get back to this scene. Uh, um, I played. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Gunner, it's you. Uh, so you uh, you lose one honor and put it back. Um, cool. Uh, so that should, was it. 
should I have taken one for offering the gift, or are we pushing that to next scene? Like, because when you offer a woman yeah. a gift, I, I okay, I, I didn't, I don't necessarily need to double dip on the gift. I guess because my thought is we're going to see how Gunnar responds to that. But she also said she would take care of making sure that was well received. So I just, I just wanted to clarify one way or the other. Yeah, that's great. Cool. So, uh, Tony, it's your scene. Um, uh, let's, um, uh, I mean, I think just keeping the narrative moving forward, um, uh, I think, I think we'll go not necessarily immediate, but a couple of days have passed, maybe even up to a week. Um, uh, I think there's been some communication back and forth that gives time for us to lay the groundwork. Uh, but I think we'll be back at, uh, at, uh, Holler. um, and Roar will have come to drop off a bunch of fish. I mean, whatever, whatever, whatever logistically would actually be reasonable and make sense. Um, a barrel of fish. A barrel yeah. of fish. Yeah, so I, I, that was kind of my immediate thought, and I was like, I don't know if that's historically accurate. It also doesn't especially matter. So whatever historically accurate <laughs> way of conveying the accurate type of fish to the place that I needed to would be how it happened. Um, and... Uh, I um I'm trying to decide how horrible of a person Rora is right now and my heart is really hard. Um uh I know that there is not necessarily going to be a robust mechanical system for how magic works. How does magic work? Just however we decide like if I'm yep. like I etched this rune into something like then that's okay, cool. Um uh I guess I got. I need to lean into it. All right. So, um, so yeah, we 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 find Hesta Holler. Uh, we have uh, uh, Roar has has come, um, and he's brought. I think. Uh, uh, oh well, I guess we've got three people in the scene already. Let's see. Um, we need Astrid. Uh, let's and we've got Gunnar and Thord, who theoretically will both be there. I know we have to interact with Gunnar. Um, so. Uh, I think we see the same scenario, but we're at the main house in Hesta Holler now. We're at, at, at Gunnar's house. Um, so uh, Max, you'll be playing Gunnar. And the intent is for me to, I want to nail home Gunnar's debt to me in this scene. <laughs> like I want to keep Gunnar safe, but I want to keep my, I think my mind keeping Gunnar safe is keeping Gunnar underneath my thumb and in my control. Yeah. All right. Um, I mean, I think I'm probably like, I've been kind of like warned, uh, that like, I know, I know that you are going to arrive. Uh, and so am like prepping the house so that I look impressive because I care about what you think. Hmm. So yeah. like trying to like set it up so that it like we are going to host you. There is going to be a feast, even if it is like like I am trying to even with my like limited resources, because I think probably a lot of our food is not available. But like, you know, I've pulled out all of the the mead and have like made a little bit of a feasting table to like be a little showy uh, about your arrival. OK. Um. And then uh, let's have, um, I think leaving Sib out of the scene is easy. I think, um, do we want Thord? I, I think it's Peter, I'll toss it out to you. Do you want Thord to be there? Or do we think Astrid is more the representative in this moment or both can be the case also? Hmm, that is a good question. I'm not sure. Um, may, we could have Astrid come in after a while. Uh, so uh, we could just say that Astrid shows up, okay. uh, and then anyone can just jump in and, and uh, be her. Cool. Um, well, let's name let's name th uh, let's name th you be as being Thord then. Um, and I actually sure. think that I will have brought Saga with me. Um, so why don't we have Quinn? Why don't you play Saga? Yes, I was really hoping you would say that. <laughs> uh, so uh, Thord is. Um, preparing uh, uh like uh, preparing some kind of uh um welcoming uh when you arrive um yeah 
And what is what is uh, what was the other character? Saga. Saga. So my mm-hmm. I've brought my daughter with me. And so, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm helping with the fish because I'm yeah. strong as an ox. Yep. Um. Uh. What kind of welcoming has Thord prepared? I guess. <laughs> I uh, I think there's um <laughs> uh, we we were standing uh in a line like the 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 people of, of the farm uh and I'm I'm there to, to to greet you because uh Gunner yeah but you're also there so we've uh, we've prepared uh we also have a gift I presume uh as a thank you um so the, it's it's just a very like a, we're we're trying to make it formal. Okay, that that's most of it, mostly it. Yeah. Um. So I uh, uh yeah as I show up uh we, you know we'll we'll we we'll, we park we I, I hop down I uh I let um I think I just I mean I'll ask Saga to unload the barrel. <laughs> um. And uh, uh I'll uh, I'll receive whatever gift is offered, but I think in addition to the fish, I've brought like a. Uh, uh, two like bundles of like herbs like uh whatever would have been hung and dried um like one for astrid and one for civ who aren't there so i'll just give them to their husbands uh and instead uh and say oh these are for your uh for your your uh wives uh thank you so much for 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 hosting and for having us we we you know uh, we would never want you to be without um you know and it is as hard as it is, um, you know, we will we'll have to discuss um, what is owed. Also, but I mean, first, always, but first, but first, been. let us just let us just let us just feast first. We're obvious. We are. Uh, we're obviously very happy to have you, uh, and and uh, not the least of which is because you've brought provisions that we that we desperately need but you've you've always been such a generous leader for this community um i i'm uh so let's see complimenting your compliment you're praising me is that is that what you're doing yeah 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 uh, I don't give an honor from the bag you if they're present uh, unless someone insults the man you praise uh, yeah is anybody going to insult me <laughs> i feel like we're all scared of you a little bit i don't know yeah. what happened, but you've become like a little bit of a <laughs> I become a little bit of a of a Viking like a godfather, <laughs> and so, um, uh, no, oh, oh uh, thank you for the gracious praise. You know, we just, I, I do, I do what I'm able, um, uh, when I can, um, you know, but, but what I always, do. I mean, look at, look at what you've done with this, um, I mean, kind of look around, uh, in a questioning manner, uh, this, uh, this scrap of land. I mean, you're, you're, it's, it's almost a full fledged farm. Am I being insulted or praised? I am not, not at all certain here. Not, neither. I'm not triggering a move. I'm establishing yeah. what kind of scumbag my character is. Um, I, I actually... I, I, if you want to take it as an like insult, you praised. could. Or I, 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 yeah. I, for, for me, I, I think it sounds like you're praising him. Uh, but sure. that would... Well, I mean, I what don't. Do you think? It, it, it depends on how... I will say this. I will take it however um, Gunnar is receiving it. Right. Yeah, I feel like I'm I'm like chuffed, like I'm a little like, oh, you noticed or whatever. Okay. <laughs> right. Uh, you're right. Okay. It is a scrap heap, but we try. Like it, like. So Gunner gains one, one honor. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Well, uh, let's let's uh, let's move inside for the feast. We brought you. We made you a present. Uh, I think that probably what the, the, because we are low on like supplies, I think that probably what we've made is some kind of like ceremonial dagger situation. Like it's not a weapon. It's just like a nice, a nice little touch. Uh, it's more like, a, more like a tool. Yeah. Like something useful. Like it sits on an altar. Like it's just a, it's a good looking, but like not probably you're going to skewer a man with it. Right. Um, so Thor, Thor uh, he he um, comes up with this um, with this uh, dagger to you. Oh, uh, uh, please accept this this gift. Um, I, uh, uh, you know, 
unnecessary, but uh, but I I do I do appreciate it. I think this will make a great uh, a great and useful tool for for Saga. Um, <laughs> I hand it I hand it over to Saga. Uh, I uh, uh, you know not not as permanent, but hopefully equally useful. I brought you these, and I'll I'll then give them these these dried uh, like bundles of herbs uh, that I have brought with me uh, that we've been kind of curing over the course of the winter. Um, you know, so, something, something for the fish, you know, to, to give flavor to, to life. Oh, I, uh, I handed over to, uh, who was the woman again? Saga. Uh, Saga is, but Saga's my oh, daughter. Saga is so. the only woman. So, um, yeah. I it's think just... Astrid walks, uh, walks out the door, uh, from, from inside. Um, I, and I meet her in the, in the doorway, uh, Oh, Astrid, uh, our guests have arrived. We don't have an Astrid, Astrid yet. Astrid. I, I'll just we don't pop have an Astrid. Over. I'll just pop over to Astrid. You're going to be Astra uh, and Saga? Saga? Yeah, sure. Not Both a problem. Are, I think that's great. Um, ah, already. Wonderful. What have they brought? Uh, the fish and, and these herbs, as you can see. Um, and... Do we know what Roar wants in return? We haven't gotten to that part yet, but I'm sure he will be excessively reasonable. Saga snorts. <laughs> right. Um, let's uh, let's feast. <laughs> uh, come inside. And just go inside. Uh, I I think eat, I think this continuing the scene, but moving it kind of into a into a. A more like we we eat. It's a it's a it's a good time. People's people's stomachs are are full on whatever type of regionally yeah. appropriate, historically accurate fish and herbs we just uh, we just whipped up, along with the the offerings of the the household. Um, uh, and we we get through just kind of I think the dinner portion uh, without you know without any sort of major elements unless there's something somebody wants to do. Then we can get to mm. the after after dinner part of the scene. Yeah, I'm thinking that uh, Thord uh, comes up to Gunner uh, and said, "How how how can you accept this without knowing what they want in return?" I mean, what option do we really have? This isn't just me accepting it. This is this isn't me accepting it for me. This is though we have the whole we have the whole farm to think about. Yes, but you are in charge. Right, but Roar has always been good and fair. I don't think that's true. Um, all right, uh, and since this is this is in public, uh, and I, um, otherwise the scene would end. So uh, someone, I what we're saying now uh, is kind of heard, um, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and oh. so what you're saying, you're so you're you're praising um, Roar. Apparently, I have two modes: anger, sniveling. This is, this is the only. I think probably it. There's there's a couple of good options here. Either Astrid or Saga could add something interesting. I feel, um, but I think uh, I think maybe it's Saga and and like she was I don't know doing something, but she's up and about and she overhears this. And she's like, "You don't know the kind of man my father is." Then. Uh, I look at her. What? What do you mean? Well, surely you know how <laughs> egregiously in debt Seagard is to him. He doesn't demand payment. He just keeps letting him get further in. And you know, you never know when he's when he's gonna ask him to pay up. You signed a deal with the devil, bud. I looked to Gunner. His association with that sniveling weasel of a man, if you could even call him that, is has been his biggest flaw in my eyes. I try to overlook it, but I can't possibly understand what he could see in keeping that kind of company. That's an insult. Yeah. Every chance I get. Uh, so, um, but uh, Sigurd is not here, right? Sigurd is not right. here. No, Sigurd no. is not here. Uh, so I guess no one objects, unless unless Roar or Thord does. Yeah, no, I I don't I don't uh, object. I suppose I suppose Roar's there, so I should say I can't like 
Is is this? Oh no! I think you should lean. I think you should lean into it just like you did. I feel like talking about you in the third person Uh, would be a little. I think I think it's a it's a a side conversation that is not hushed, but not like anyone could could hear parts of what you're saying, but only if they're paying. And I think yeah, Roar is probably you know holding court somewhere else in the room with other members of the household yet unnamed uh, who are who are present for that. Um, like so is, is able Gunner, to hear what you're saying, James but not, Gunner. um, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to object per se. Um, um, no, right. I, it, it may, maybe kind of towards, maybe I heard the first part of it, finish up a conversation while you're insulting him and then say, um, oh, you know, I, the, when, when next year, when you're on your feet, um, a little bit better when the, when the farm has grown a little bit more, um, we can talk about about what's owed at that point. Um, you know that right now, when you, when you have nothing, what's the point in naming a debt? Um, you know, like I I, could I ne- raise my eyebrows so. High. <laughs> I could I could I could never see it in my heart to take from to to name the desire for someone who already has nothing. Oh, that's an insult. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> um, Gunner, Thor is looking at Gunner now. I, I'm just gonna like I I don't actively respond, uh, so I'm just gonna let it like roll off. But it like is a little prickly, but I'm not I'm not gonna oppose it. All right. Um, so I think, uh, Thord, uh, Thord walks uh, up to Gunner and gets in your face. Uh, Gunner, you have, you can't, you can't accept this. We don't know what we're getting into. Didn't you hear what Saga just said? We have to. Since when has anybody listened to Saga? It's a good You know that she just likes to throw her opinions around. What if she is right? You must stand up for yourself. Yeah, Astrid, okay. How can, Sokka's how can left you... to Astrid's, Astrid's in now. Yeah. What's this? What? What is Sokka's? What's going on? Astrid, did he... I, I, I ignore Astrid. Uh, Reasonable. Uh, Gunner, it is your responsibility as the, uh, as the head of this, uh, this farm to do what what is right for all of us, you, you can't sign this deal for without knowing what it is. You're not that stupid, are you? Uh, from every what? direction. Well, the that's uh, the... okay. Fine, fine. Roar. Obviously, uh, I have to do what is best for my people. Uh, what? Surely, you can give us some framing of terms. I mean. What do you have to offer me? You're unmarried, right? Uh, I, he's a widower, yes, correct. Uh, I don't I don't know if this is historically accurate either. I feel like probably it is. You know I have an unwed sister. Is this I feel like this is just like a across the room, doing. across the room, Siv is just like <laughs> uh, uh, I, I'm, you know, it seems it seems odd to exchange uh, your sister for a barrel of fish. I see it not as for a barrel of fish, but as a sign of of a forge, a forging of our relationships as communities aligned in our goals. Um, well, if it's, if it's a, if it's a mutual exchange, uh, then how is it the payment back for a debt? I mean, I didn't say I had a debt. We are (laughs) merely discussing terms. I'm not saying that you have a debt either. I'm saying that until you have anything to offer, it, it doesn't make any sense to name what the, what the, what is owed. I feel like that's this is ridiculous. I feel like you just called my sister nothing to offer, which feels a little bit like an insult, but I don't know if it's insulting me or Siv. Um, uh, the 
the I mean his he is essentially also turning your words back on you. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, which I which um, I think is his play here. Um consistently. Like it is it is he, he wants he wants you under his thumb. I don't think he I don't think that Roar thinks your sister puts you under his thumb. And so uh he doesn't seem particularly inclined. Uh also she's <laughs> fairly aloof <laughs> so, yeah, nobody likes her so i know it's not that like i don't think it would be considered an appealing offer but i'm trying i'm trying to work it out in my benefit because i also don't like her i think is the uh well uh, again i'm I, I i would be loath to 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 jump so quickly into uh, such a such a uh hefty offer um without Fully exploring the implications and the benefits to each party. Right. Thorne has already I... left this converse- conversation now. Uh, he's just uh, fed up with the uh, the lack of leadership. I'm trying, bro. We have so little. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, I think probably that this is a discussion best had uh when we are a little bit deeper in our cups uh, i i can right. fully i can fully agree to that um and and again perhaps um uh, perhaps just you know let's get through the winter and uh, in the spring we can have more of a conversation about um sieve and fish and and what is owed yeah I feel like this is me. Like I am, I'm going to like sit down and like offer a mug, like a, a a stein of mead, and be like, "This is. I am not. I am both trying to make it look like I'm having this conversation and trying to not have this conversation." <laughs> Right? Like, I'm like, I understand that I need to try and, like, push this forward, but I'm like, no, it's fine. We'll solve it over a glass. Uh, while not actually solving it at all. So is that the end of the scene? Perhaps? I think that's the end of the scene. Yeah. Um, did I have an in, did I did I insult you earlier when I said nothing? Was that an, did we decide that was an insult that you didn't? I just feel like it felt like an insult, but I think really you were insulting Civ. So I don't know if it was me. And oh no, this is when I said when you this is before we did Civ when I said like you have nothing to offer, so let's not name the dead at the very beginning, and then we jumped to Civ. Was that did we decide that was an insult or not? It feels like an insult. Okay. Um, I but, feel like, yeah, like, I feel like part think, of Because you were life. like, I just let it go off. Like, I kind of just push it down. And that's what I was trying to remember. So what... what I, oh, I think I took it as an insult. It was more yeah. like, I'm not going to... to you didn't escalate, though. Escalate it. So I does, just... Does that mean I take one honor from, I think so. from you? Okay. I didn't Probably. just want to grab it in the middle of the scene. Um, um, so I know that at the end of the scene, I am I don't think that I any longer look up to Roar. I think that like that would have yeah. been like there were many insults thrown at me. That is no longer a thing that I think I would be like carrying around. Right. Uh, yes. Uh, let's see. Um, who um, Quinn? You played both women. I did. I mean, Gunner is just absolutely flounder in here. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, actually, I think that I, I, I'm not looking up to Gunner anymore. Rude. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so when I, uh, now I've um, changed the relationship that, that I have uh, to the one that I have the want to. So then I'll, uh, I'll probably have to ch- uh, create a new want anyway. Um. But, Does something happen if I get to like zero honor? Like, do I like die? No. Okay. 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 This is not. Um, I'm like sorry. I perhaps should have said that that you you can have zero honor. Yeah. It's just that if you do, you can't stand up for yourself, and people can walk over you uh, however however they want. Um, but I can still kill them. Yes. Can. Uh, right. can you can still kill someone. Uh, I'm thinking uh, time wise. Um, what how 
I mean, I, I could do proceed? I could do a couple more scenes. I, I'm I'm enjoying it. Like, and like I said, I'm not I'm not in a particular rush. I marked I blocked out four hours for us to play. I just my explanation was just we don't have to go four hours. We can go four hours. Like, mm -hmm. uh, we want to leave at least thirty minutes at the end to just kind of talk about. I mean, we need we need thirty minutes to for the the decompression piece, and then about thirty minutes for an interview uh, section. But other than right. that, I'd love to do a couple more scenes at least. I think. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Definitely awesome. enjoying it. I, I also want to know about characters that aren't Gunner. <laughs> You're like, can we, can we maybe not <laughs> no, beat up on no, Gunner no, for a little bit? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this whole thing, so we've just been Gunner is no good, very bad day. Yeah. It's, I'm learning that I'm, I'm, maybe this is, I feel okay as a person that I'm failing at masculinity in this game, but. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, I feel a little masculinity. bit horrible yeah, about yeah. myself. That's, that, yeah. that's a, a, a difference. Yeah. Um, and so, um, and it's now it's secrets, which I think the good news is more than likely this is not going to be a scene between Gunner and someone else because it's, it's, it's the character you do not get along with and have the least established connections to. And so, um, so anything else we need to name out of, out of the closing for that scene and before we move over? Uh, I don't think so. Um, we've switched uh our lookups and looks look down upons and we have uh decided who was least manly so that's the end of that uh yeah but i should also i should just uh, pick a new want for yeah so if your relationship with somebody changes then your want changes is that the way it works yeah, because uh, since you pick a, a want from uh, that depends on uh, whether you look up to or look down upon them. Uh, if you if that changes, you should probably get a new want as well. Okay. Um, so oh, I forgot uh, to do the PDFs. We can flip through. Great. Learn yeah, yeah, yeah. You can look through them and get more. Info. I think I only forgot because I know it just like it only flips for the person who's you made that note about it being individual. Hmm. Yep. Yeah, mirror boards, yeah. anybody either watching mirror boards are a very cool tool. It can seem a little bit confusing just to watch them from a distance. Uh but like I've played three or four games that are mirror board based now that have been um absolutely great for remote tabletop play. No, mirror looks like it's gonna be really good for like yeah. a lot of stuff. I'm glad to be trying it. Um, yeah. So, so Seagard, uh, you're gonna set the scene. Seagard, that's me. <laughs> I, was to say, I, was to, I was like doing the countdown. <laughs> I'm like, how long do I wait before I say well, Quinn? You're Seagard. I was too busy in my head. I was busy planning out a miro board for a game, and I was like, I can put that there, and I can put that there. Um. Okay, what does Seagard want to do? Um, hmm. I think I'm I'm interested in Thord. And as of now, Seagard and Thord have very little to do with each other. So I'm trying to think of a of maybe a reason why they could have something to do with each other. Well, they uh, uh we're we're related by blood, so there's Yeah, true. Uh, uh, um Oh, maybe, maybe I, maybe I go to you yeah. uh -huh. to talk about this whole situation. That works for me. I mean, I know that Sigurd is pretty fucking sure that there's nothing wrong with, with the stock that he gave you guys, but it is bugging me. So right. <laughs> I, I think that, I think that he would definitely like to talk about this um, as well. And I think you're a good person to do that with. So yeah, totally. So at Akrabaki, um, and I would say that maybe a day or two has passed, um, just kind of like everyone's still sort of letting this thing settle and, and it's just been bothering you more and more. And you're like, I gotta go and see like if there's something else that can be done, maybe. Um, so that's, that's, that's my thinking. Um, mm -hmm. I may be... I'm like absently playing a little game with myself, but probably not focusing on it very hard. I'm too busy thinking like, like I'm checking my stocks and I'm like, is there anything wrong here? I'm like, no. I mean, I don't think so. So yeah. Uh, what are you up to then, Thord? 
Uh, okay, so Thord, uh, when the scene starts, um, Thord is knocking on your door. Cool. Um, I think elsewise. Uh, what, what? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Continue. Um, and then I also want to get to know Eric and Un a little bit. So, um, Max, how about we how about we uh, get you playing Un here, and then mm -hmm. Tony, if you'd like to play Eric, who my, is my good for nothing uncle. Yeah. Excellent. Um, I'm down with that. Totally. Okay. That sounds good to me. Un, is there anything you want to add to the scene? Uh, I think, no, I think I'm probably like also wanting to make sure, like probably just following you around a little bit, also trying to make sure that like the store, the stores are all good. Uh, yeah. 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 I all think, right. uh. I think Eric probably inserts himself into this conversation um, to cast doubt on Roar specifically. <laughs> like that is like, he, he mm. knows this is all going down in the background. Um, I actually think uh, a lot of Roar's uh, opulence and control in the community used to be Eric's and is no longer. And that is, <laughs> that is what the breakup uh, in the family is. And so um, he is around largely to be around so that he can insert himself into the conversation that's about to happen. Great. All right. So Thord is knock, knock, knocking, huh? Yeah. Um, I think I hear you knocking, but I'm like checking the stores around the side and I'm like, I'm around here. Who is it? Oh, um, <clears throat> it's, uh, it's Thord. What brings you uh, by brother-in-law? Well, uh, I, I need to speak to you about something. Uh, um, but I, I can see that you're busy now, so um, no, no, no. Bit... But it's it's fine. It's fine. What's what's is it something to do with uh with the the deal? Mm hmm. That you could say that. Uh, Gunner has done something foolish. That's uh, pretty usual. I... Yes. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm can we is that like an insult? It's Was a, that it's too a simple insults? one. Uh, <laughs> the agreement though. Such betrayal. Mm. Uh I I think you could you could do a stronger job at insulting him. That's uh, reasonable. Uh, this is just how people think about her <laughs> now. It's not yeah. actually an insult. Yeah. Uh, well, yes. Um so we we have accepted to um we have accepted uh, a large um sh shipment uh it's we have accepted a, a lot of uh food from from roar and we don't know what we will pay yet huh. yet you don't when i gamble with roar look i'm not going to stand here and tell you that it's a wise decision of mine but at least I know what the stakes are before I roll the dice. I'm very concerned about the whole situation. <sighs> I... I could try and... Eric, you know, you know your, your nephew. Is there some way for us to speak with him about this, or...? And Eric, like, spits when you, <laughs> when you say your nephew. Um, I mean, he'll always he'll always have the veneer of approachability. I mean, you can you can easily speak to him about it. Whether he'll say anything or not is an absolutely different part of the conversation. I I just I don't think that Gunner is has put us all in 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 a horrible situation. And we need, if things go sour, we need allies. Hmm. I know that you don't like Gunner, but I... He's a weaselly little bitch of a man, frankly. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there that, we go. That would be that, Did that do it? Did that do it? 
Uh, well, well, no, because uh, Thord, uh, Thord uh, speaks up. Uh, oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Oh. Uh, hey, Sigurd, you you don't talk to me. To, you don't talk about Gunner like that. He is me and him. We are like brothers. And I know that he doesn't make the smartest cho smartest of choices, but you don't badmouth them in front of me, okay? You and him may be like brothers, but you and me are supposedly our brothers. Hmm? Where should your allegiances really lie? Hmm. Oh, is that is that an escalation? I think it's a challenge. I don't think I was. I don't think I necessarily insulted anyone. Um. So. I don't know. I, I do don't think I, 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 I feels it feels substantial enough as an escalation. Um, yeah, like it's not it, an insult, but I feel like you're trying to like you are. Like it's a counter to a degree. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, you're you're, saying you're like choose. forcing me to take sides. Yeah. So yeah, you put put an honor into the pool. Ah, uh, you're right. I we are we are bound by blood, and I know it. But I don't live here, and that's and why I've I have never, to look up for him. I've never understood that. Why? Why are you and Astrid with with Gunnar? There's plenty of room here. I know that Astrid and I don't get along, but but you could you could bring her back. Why? There's don't no reason Astrid not along. to. I think Astrid just, I think Astrid thinks I'm an idiot. And that's literally and, like, Un is just poking in being like, why don't you get along? Just like listening on the side. Right? <laughs> right, cool. I never really understood that. Did something happen between the two of you? Um, it's, it's an old, it's an old story and not especially relevant. And frankly, I think everyone in Vault should just have put it behind them a long time ago. And Thord, you, you should have the authority to, to, Move that process along. If you want allies, you have them here. Um, is that implying that I, that we, uh, or you're just saying that we have allies in you? Yeah. All right. Oh, do I take this honor from the? Yeah, you take yeah. you. You got them both. Thank you, Sigurd, for for being so kind. Even though we, you, uh, even though we have our differences, and I'm I'm glad that blood uh, blood binds us in this way. Eric, I uh, I was hoping that you would uh, maybe also be an ally in this. In this situation with Roar. I mean, anything that brings Roar down is something that um, I could find myself allied with. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. You are both honorable men. I, uh, I thank you very much. Now, I only need to make sure that Gunner doesn't do anything more stupid. <laughs> and... Um, I think we cut the scene. Cool. Nice. Ooh. Well. Oon, who who is Okay, the... so Yeah, uh let's see. I mean, I think it's definitely Thor that was the least manly even without losing the the literal man battle. Uh Yeah. There's a lot there's a lot of like deferring. I feel like asking for help isn't particular like you did you just like the whole tone was like, yeah, no, not we <laughs> we our farm is really not manly. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's a funny thing. Um all right, okay. so there's two of us this... that are attracted to women hanging out on this farm. I feel like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Big gay farm over here is uh, <laughs> losing the man battle. Trying to get rid of all the women. <laughs> no. Oh man. Oh, that's cool. Uh <laughs> as um as the, we've now uh, had one scene each, 
it, it is time for the act break. So normally mm. we play we play two acts, which means that we have one scene each. Um, but as uh, as we have the act break, we do a little procedure to see uh, who gains honor and not. Uh, so we begin by determining who is on top of the hierarchy, hierarchy, uh, and that is the character with the highest amount of honor. Uh, and that is, that is yeah, Roar, first. without a doubt. Steamrolling mm -hmm. us over here. Yeah, Jesus. So uh, if we start by Sigurd, you you read uh, who you look up to. And if you look up to uh, the man on top of the hierarchy, you gain one honor. I do. And who do you look up to? Apart from Roar, I I look up to Thord, um, uh, because at least he has a good head on his shoulders. All right, thank you. Uh, I look up to Sigurd, and I look up to Roar, so I get one honor as well. And then there's Gunner. Who do you look up? Surprisingly, I get no honor. Uh... <laughs> I only look up to Thord. All right. And now it's time for the man on top of the hierarchy to say who they, uh, who he looks down upon. And all those characters <laughs> lose one honor. Good. Great game. <laughs> it hasn't changed. It's just what I picked randomly at the beginning. Uh. <laughs> Gooner, bud. Oh, man. <laughs> I mean, and I, I will clarify, not that this is better, <laughs> but but he just thinks if you like a little boy, and mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. it's not like this. He doesn't despise you. He just, you know, thinks yeah. you're you're weak and need to be protected. Yep, yep. Great. All right, Good. going great for me. Yeah. Okay, so uh, now it's half past. Uh, half past two. Yeah. So I guess as you said there's normally two acts, so we would just go around one more time. How yeah. does? I mean, here's my question: How does everybody feel about that? Do y'all have the the time in your day? Do y'all want to go all the way around? I'm I'm good either way, but we're literally like, you know, if we if we want to if we want to do another if we want to pause here and just debrief and talk about the game, or if we want to keep on going, I'm fine either way. Yeah, I'm also fine either way. I have an idea. I I I think if if somebody doesn't want to go all the way, I also feel like I like if we want to wrap, we could wrap with what we would have done next. But because I'm yeah. very curious, but I like I'm also I like, I like closing scene. scenes. But I I think if we're gonna yeah. do closing scenes and to a certain degree, it also like we might as well just keep on going. Yeah. Does that work for we you, Peter? See. Is that is that fine with your schedule? Yes. Okay. Uh, I haven't. Well, since it's uh night now uh here so uh I, I i'm just going to bed uh <laughs> after this okay cool um so yeah I'm, I'm good to keep on playing yeah i because I, I feel like we just established everything that's happening and now is when things yeah now it's when the shit's going, going, going. Get crazy. yeah yeah another four scenes that was a good mid-season finale Mm. It, it it might be the case that we don't need all the four scenes. Uh, mm. It depends on what happens. Uh, sometimes uh, shit goes down in the first. Someone's scene just gonna kill raids. me right away. It's gonna be great. Yeah. yeah. Huh? <clears throat> but um, do we need a little break, perhaps? Uh, if we want to do a five minute break, I'm totally down with that. Um, let's come back yeah. at um, at thirty or sorry at forty five after. Uh, the hour give us a chance to stretch. Give you out there watching a little bit of a chance to stretch also too, or just you know this will be mm -hmm. clipped out later and it'll magically flash forward. But hit pause in a second if you want to uh, treat yourself. Uh, we'll be right back. We are playing Blood Feud uh, with Peter from Black Visits Live right now on Kickstarter at the link uh, down below. All of our beautiful faces, uh, and we'll be back to play some more in just one second.
And we are back here live on Plus One EXP's Roll for Content channel. Um, you know, we're just, we're, we took a little break. We're finishing, uh, you know, uh, up the last little bit of whatever we were noshing on and um, playing Blood Feud, which is live right now on Kickstarter. You can go to the link right down below, ttrpg.link slash Blood Feud. Um, we are playing with one of the two designers from Black Fist Publishing, Peter. Uh, Peter's been an absolute, um, well, I don't <laughs> Joy is weird to say. It's really, it's been really fun, um, and I, I am very upset at how good I have been at being a horrible person. Um, I was saying right as we went offline, the, the the trick in my mind was thinking, okay, when I'm running the horrible calculating villain, how do I run them when I'm a GM? And just thinking like that as I play my character has been pretty much the trick for me. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens next. Um, as we go into Act 2. So, yeah, we just finished one, about halfway through the actual play of the game, and we'll have some decompress and talk a little bit about our experiences also, too. Uh, so if you're out there watching, stick around. Um, and also, if you have not yet, go check out the Kickstarter. Um, so, yeah, we were just talking about uh, the next possible scene, uh, which is going to be set uh, by Thor slash Peter. Yes. Um so I'm still a little bit unsure what would be a good next scene uh, because my problem is that I don't really see any way out of this. I just know that uh, Thor dislikes this whole situation and he, he wants to keep Gunner safe uh, and he's got, gotten him some allies, uh, but then what? Uh, we could fast forward time uh, quite a bit to kind of see what this whole. Yeah, I think I think moving forward in time is good. And even if we want to maybe, I, you know, uh, Max had kind of mentioned this as maybe as an indie mechanic, but even establishing maybe a thing or two everybody did that kind of sets the stakes um, a little bit to maybe give a little bit more structure for Act 2. Like, so if we want to go to the... Because we kind of pushed off in one of the scenes to like, we'll figure out exactly what all this means in the spring. If we want to push forward to like the spring where that is starting to be more of a, yeah. a present thing, that may make the most sense. Um, and then maybe maybe name something that we feel like is important and create some possible conflict that happened in the rest of winter for each of our characters. Does that work? Oh, sure. Is that okay, Peter? Yeah, sure. Okay. It sounds like a good idea. I need, I need some inspiration. So... Um, then why don't we, we'll skip over Peter and we'll, we'll come to him maybe, uh, last for that. Max, what's one thing that Gunnar has been up to during the rest of winter? I mean, so Peter, you have to consent to this. In my mind, the fact that both of our characters are hanging out on this farm and both happen to be potential closet cases. Uh, I feel like there is, if not acted upon like some kind of tension potentially present there. And what that means is that Gunner is probably trying to repair that relationship. Like what the shape of that relationship looks like, I think could be a varying degrees of intimacy, but it could just be like a brotherly intimacy. But I think that like the winter has been spent trying to like win back a little of Thor's opinion of him. Right. Because I feel like probably like and maybe it's just because I'm a big queer mo, but like it's hard for me to read like these two queers on a farm with these women around that they don't really seem to care for in any way, shape or form. And all of a sudden we're broke back mountain like it's not uh... <laughs> that that acts, that I, I love that. I can't wait to hear what Peter says, but that also plays perfectly into one of the things that I'm thinking also <laughs> too. So, Peter, what are, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah that sounds great. Um I'm not really sure how how Thor uh, like handles the whole uh, Astrid situation. I'm I'm not sure. We haven't really seen what their relationship is like. Yeah. So uh, be in a loving partnership at the very right. So so I am. Um, so like so since reaching into detail, I'll come next. So um, Roar has consistently come by, basically under a vague guise of like. Uh, there's there's kind of the vague menace of checking on his investment, uh, but every time he does bring small gifts with him, there's no mechanical value to this. Uh, those gifts are always for Sieve and for Astrid, and he always flirts with both of them. Um, and so um, so as far as any of that goes, um, that that is also taking place uh, in in the background also too. 
Um, and then uh, Sigurd, what about you? Um, I think Sigurd is, I think Sigurd is trying to shore up his relationships um, with, with Thord. Like Astrid, Astrid does not care for Sigurd. I think it's one of those circumstances where the where the younger sibling is definitely smarter than the older one and is just absolutely sick of them. And so just Astrid would like to avoid me if possible at all times. And I'm just like, sister, why? Why? And she's like, Seeker, just don't. Um, so, but I've 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 realized that Thord is maybe an in. Um uh not only into that situation, but also with my sister. Uh, and then I'm also, I think maybe I'm trying to be a little bit um, cleverer when it comes to Roar, because now I have, like, there's something that I can do, maybe. So I'm trying, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get a, I'm trying to cozy up to him a little bit to see if maybe I can help out, help out my good buddy Thord here. And I guess Gunner, as, a, you know, is an unavoidable side effect. I feel like I should change if we're doing this. I mean, maybe this is like we're, we might be breaking the rules a little bit, but part of me thinks that like I should maybe be changing my want. Like I have progressed past like like I kind of tried to put Singer in this place and it didn't go particularly well, so maybe <laughs> I'm a little less attached to that. Uh, yeah. And uh, either and probably gonna like I I think what makes sense now is that Gunner is uh, attempting to, I'm not gonna go with gain respect because I think that is a little easy. I think I'm gonna, is is trying to prove himself to Thord. Okay, cool. Because I feel like that mimics what's happening a little bit. Yeah. And you're the only one I look up to anymore, so. <laughs> Right, so maybe that is a good next scene then, perhaps, to, to see what what the situation is like on uh, on our farm between... We haven't seen my son either, so maybe just... Mm. Maybe just a scene at home, and it, it might be a boring scene, but maybe it, it, it'll shed light on uh, on something. I think maybe it's uh, maybe it's uh, closing in on that time where uh, Rower is uh, coming to uh, kind of say what what he wants in return, or when we said that we we're going to talk about this. So these are this is like a week before, uh, or something like that. Um, and it's uh, it's at Hesta Holor, of course, and there is. Uh, Astrid is there, played by, uh, let's see, uh, Quinn, perhaps? Sure. I love how you're just that whole family a lot. <laughs> just... Yeah. The family line. All right, yeah. What, what does Astrid do? Um, I think Astrid is probably, uh, whipping... Whipping up some fish. The last of it. <laughs> the last of it. All right. Uh, Tony, you play Ulf. Ulf, okay. Uh, Ulf, I think, is near where the fish is being cooked, but really only to sneak maybe some, like, very early uh, having come back, like, fruits. Like, fruits that really shouldn't be eaten yet that were kind of, like brought in to test like whether they were they were tasted good at all and they don't really but he just like he really loves how tart they are and he shouldn't be eating them like they're gonna make his stomach upset and that's what it will suck uh -huh. to okay they're like a bit of pride in that like a little bit when the cats brought back a mouse and you're like oh like, oh, thanks great i'm so happy you're right 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 absolutely uh yeah, Max, Ulf, absolutely trying to get other people in on eating those apples also yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, I think that Gunner, I mean, as a, as a cute little home moment, I think that Gunner is probably eating the berries to make 
like is is accepting some of the like trying to be a good like yeah yeah th you're this is a very good job it was very good of you you should definitely just like encouraging a little bit and then like eating a couple berries there's a also. there's a ton of them there's a ton yeah. of them like trying I mean, to eat them very slowly so as not to i can get more yeah <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, and Thord is also sitting there, um, like trying to explain to to Ulf that well, these are not supposed to be picked yet. Uh huh. Uh huh. And I'm just like trying to put one in your mouth. <laughs> but no, thank you. But we, you shouldn't be picking these because, oh, never mind. Well, at least we have food that we uh, that will get us full. Uh, berries are good, but. Oh, I mean, never mind. Mom, mom's always saying someone actually has to take care of this place. Oh, Ulf, you're exaggerating. I, you know. Now, Ulf, good job picking these berries. We can try them. We can use them in poultices. They're, it's very, very helpful. You shouldn't encourage him about this. If if we would have saved for these for later, we would have had them, I don't know, for jams or whatever. He's not. He needs to be taught responsibility. It's too late now, Ford. We'll just make the best of what we can. Yeah, Mom always says someone has to be responsible. Would you? Would we shut up about that? <laughs> oh, go! If you want, if you're so keen on picking these berries, go outside. Here. Okay. Oh. I will take you outside and try and point out some better berries. <laughs> I think it's possible that there should, you guys try not to be in each other's throats. I will take Ulf and we will go and highlight the, the nice good berries that are better ready. We're probably not in this inventory yet. Right. I will so try and show you the difference between when, mm. uh, what they look like. I sigh and I look down into the ground. Um, Astrid, what what have we gotten ourselves into? We got ourselves through the winter, is what we got, Thord. Yeah, but at what price? That is the question. That is what we'll get to know next week. Worst, I mean, look, Roar, you couldn't call Roar a fair man, but he won't, he won't leave us, he won't leave us with nothing. We'll live, we'll go on. That's, that'll be fine for me. I have a, I have a weird feeling about the whole thing. I, 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 I hate it. I really do. It doesn't. I've, 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 I actually, you know, before um, a few months ago, I went to your to your brother. Secrets? Why would you do that? Because we are family. You're going to need more that more than that to convince me. Go on. I, I, we need allies and the way you act towards your brother, it doesn't help. It doesn't help us when Roar comes here, uh, demanding for something that we can't, can't give him. I'm. But what allies, allies, what, the way you talk, what can, what could Sigurd offer us? Any, any more than, what could Sigurd do to, to help? Any more than, than Gunnar can. Roar is, Roar is the only man in this town who, who has anything. I'm going to walk back in as that's happening. Like, I, just <laughs> wanna, I wanna just catch like, Roar is the only man who has anything in this. Like walk in in that moment and be like, listen, I know that last winter, that last, at the beginning of the winter, I let us down. I didn't behave as is becoming as the leader of this farm. 
Uh, and while I have tried over the course of this winter to make you believe in me again, I know what needs to be done. And what needs to be done, Gunner? I mean, I don't think that any of us, Sigurd, though I'm loath to admit it, included in us, can survive and prosper uh, with Roar hoarding the resources of this community, of these communities, these communities. Yes, you're right. You mean the fish man? I do, in fact, mean the fish man. Well, run along and play now. <laughs> I liked the fish. I know. The point did. is to get more fish. <laughs> what? What? Do you, what? What are you proposing, Gunner? I mean, we can't thrive when he's hoarding uh, everything. But then what? I think we probably have to come up with a way to bring him down a little. This, this. I will own that, like, I feel like we've been doing the, like, Viking fishing village, and I'm a little bit on the, like, but what if we did the Viking single combat? <laughs> No, I think it I think it's reasonable. I think yeah. as Gunner, I think that somebody needs to stand up to him. And if that has to be me, it'll be me. No, it won't be you. <laughs> it won't be. Uh I I will do it. And we will have Sigurd and we we will have Eric on our side. Is that an insult? Uh, I'm I'm not trying to make it one. No, I, I get it. I think it's I think it's Thor being like, this is my moment to have a backbone. Mm. And and I want to protect you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is I how I see it. It's a little yeah. bit like I got to Yes, you were right. Um Listen, so I, I will go. I know you want to I know you want to to I know you want to protect me. Uh, but I will do what I can. I will go and ask and extend an olive branch to Sigurd. To prepare Thank you. before Roar gets here next week. If yeah, and Sigurd knows are the really law. really going to go through with this, then I'll, I'll come along too. He does know the law. I don't. And we cut the scene. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. All right. All right. Okay. Cool. So uh, Sigurd knows the law, so maybe uh, he can like arrange for this. This. Uh... So is is this uh, like a dueling situation that is going to occur? Or I mean, am I, I misreading it? Now I think in Gunner's mind it was like if somebody needs to deal with Roar, the yeah. way that one would deal with this is through yeah. eliminating the problem. But we're going to do the do it the honorable way by setting up a, a real duel and not stabbing him in the back. Yeah. Good. Okay. So end of scene procedure. Uh... I, I, I've started to look up to Gunner again. That seems uh, reasonable. Yeah, I, I mean, he did the... Uh, he, yeah, he, he did, did that. I don't think I'm, like, looking up to Sigurd yet, but I feel like I feel a little neutral about Sigurd at the moment. Like, I'm trying to will myself into, like, understanding that... You know, you, a person I care about, see something useful in him. Uh, we're getting there. There is no such reciprocity from Sigurd, but I guess we'll I guess we'll see what you say. Uh, yeah, I think I will I will change uh, my want to you to I want Gunner 
It's Gunner to love me. Oh. Mm. That's mm. the next level. All right. So that was my scene. Uh, did we? Oh yeah. Uh, the woman. That was. Ah, indeed. Quinn again. Yeah. <laughs> such, such, such as it is. Um, I think probably. I don't know. I mean, Gunnar kind of stepped up. He stepped up a little bit, um, more than usual. But Thord is the one who, at the end of the day, was like, no, it will be me. So. Mm, God damn it. <laughs> totally right and it's correct. Hard. It was my last okay. I was going to say, from, I'm from, sorry. From, the cultural, from the cultural standpoint, it's also like, Thor also was like the stern father, was the, yeah, like, I mean, did a lot yeah. of other things that were, like, I think another top on that. I also was, like, kind of only clearly motivated by my care for this other man, which right, is very right, suspect. Right, right. Like, it's not, like, yeah. no, it's fine. It's totally fair. I was, <laughs> I was yet again, I was the least manly involved. <laughs> cool. Uh, now it is Gunner's scene, uh, but... If we feel that it would be more appropriate to have one one of your your scenes first, we could switch it up. I kind of want to do a meanwhile at the Legion of Doom with Roar. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, I feel like like what's this what's this jerk up to? So are you, are y'all asking me to do a scene? If you're inclined. Um. But you want one that's fairly simultaneous. The scene I had in mind was was kind of a plot advancement. Um, now, actually, I think since we don't have very much time left, yeah, uh, we should advance to kind of the uh, the the climax. So I have a thing that I think will sure. tick it off. Like I have I have a thing I think will tick it off that I'm happy to Brilliant. do. Brilliant. But it is not it is not at it is not at the place where. Uh, where laws are made and debts are settled. Man, I really love that that's where I ended up, and that's also what I've been abusing the entire time. Like, I love it in the way that, the only way you can love this uh, type of horrible thing. Um, maybe I, maybe we call, I don't know how many people we want to pull into this. Uh, maybe, maybe we call everyone in. So, like, we can ostensibly say everyone. Maybe not Eric. I don't think I have any interest in Eric being there uh, or Un. Uh, though if they are there later, that is fine. Um, uh, but I think I think essentially calling everybody in to uh, uh, register. What did I say? Register. Um, uh, is in order to establish how the debt is being resolved is uh, is a, is a good kind of next scene. I was originally going to come to Hesta Holler, but. Um, mm. We can we can call everybody everybody in. Yeah. Um, does that make sense? No, I'm mm. into that. I think um, I think the primary person I actually want to name as the as the in initial person in the scene is Thord. Um, uh, because here's what here's what Roar is going to ask for. Uh, Roar is going to ask for Thord and Astrid to come live with him and work his land uh, in exchange for the bargain. Um, right. Uh, now he has another thing. He's he. I mean, there like he is. He's open to other conversations also too. But that is that is going to be his opening gambit. So that is what that is the that is the intent that he has is to have Thord come work off Gunnar's debt um, since it is a it is a holding to holding debt. Um, and that he is owed some sort of labor in response. Um, his actual desire here is to bring Astrid closer, um, but uh, he's doing it by saying Thor should have to come live here and work uh, and work the waters for a little bit. So I'm going to toss that over to Thor. Yeah. Um, so um, where do you think this is uh, situated in the? Uh in the house or somewhere I else? think I think this is not at the house I think uh, especially since we're leaning towards formal whatever whatever yeah. works as the 
as the central gathering place for where legal debts are settled and things are that like it is that conversation like he is taking it away from a informal into a formal capacity as far as saying this, this right. is what i am owed uh, and now you must pay so maybe it's this uh this at this um rock wall in front of it so that the people can hear easily what it's being yeah, said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some sort of natural, so, uh, like, yep. uh, amphitheater type space. Right. So Thord is uh, obviously very nervous uh, and uh, uh, not at ease uh, in this situation. He's standing in the crowd uh, listening to um, waiting for uh, Roar to, be, to begin his uh, speech. Um, I do think it's important that Astrid is there. Um, uh, people are going to end up probably having to overlap in this scene. I'm going to guess. Mm -hmm. So, um, oh, good. well, let's, um, let's, you know what, who has it? It's, this might be a little weird, but let's have, um, Max, why don't you take Astrid? Cause I don't know that you've actually, I think everybody else has oh. played Astrid except for you at some point. <laughs> I'm also happy to like jump back and forth. Yeah. I think we'll, I think we'll have some of that this scene. Um, absolutely. Um, and I, I, I do think just having Sigurd be there. So let's start with let's start with um, Quinn. You as Sigurd also too, because I think I view you as an ally. Like I look up to you. I like you. Um, uh, and it's I, I have no idea about any of these other conversations that have happened. So in my mind, like there is no compromised intent there. Um, there also may be no compromised both intent. Sides. Which seems like, like the I'm, gamble seems like the gambler way to go. Yeah, um, totally. So let's start with those people named, but everybody else essentially there. Does that work? Mm. Sure. Um, and so, um, as 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 everyone knows, I um, I I don't seek to uh, name debts for those who don't have anything to offer, but I've been. I've been asked repeatedly to name uh, what I would like in exchange for the support that I offered uh, to to Gunnar when and uh, the the families at Hesta Holler when they had nothing when they were uh, down on their luck when their their best laid plans end up ended up uh, frustrated and and unfulfilled um, whether that's due to to poor planning um, in incapability or or anything else, um, who, who is to say? Um, uh, I simply know that I desired to help another member of our community. Uh, and, and, instead, uh, and instead of just receiving that generously to, to be paid back at a moment where they had the ability, they have asked me uh, what it is I desire. Um, and so after, after taking the season to think about it, um, I think the, the most fair way um, is to allow, allow Gunnar to, to work their farm, to do their best, to, to get back into a solid place, uh, but to, in order to pay that debt for, for Thord and his family as he, as he pauses and does, looks kind of towards Thord, but actually at Astrid, uh, to, to come uh, and work the waters for a season or two at, uh, at Rekistar to, uh, to help further provide for the community and pay back the debt. And that, that's all that I simply ask. Uh, Thord is kind of uh, struck by this. What What do you mean? Go, we are needed at Hestaholer. That's where... How, how I, should we... I, I, was hap I was happy to have you stay at, at Hestaholer, but I was consistently asked what... What is desired of me, and, and again, after much consideration and much thought, is what what Hesta Holler has to offer right now, which is nothing. Um, it seems that labor is the is the fairest trade. I uh, Thor starts looking around, and he, he says, I, "I I knew this. I knew that the uh, what you would ask would be totally unreasonable, and that is why we have." I propose to settle this in 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 another way, and I uh, look over to Sigurd. Um, I'm gonna to kind be of with get you. But like, what? Uh, what? What? Out of character? What is that other way that we've discussed? Is it just murder? It's a duel. No. It's a it's blood a yeah. Feud. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So, um, I guess I'll I'll clear my throat. <clears> throat> 
Thord speaks true. Roar. I consider you my friend and benefactor. Uh, but I think it is also fair to give these, uh, give the people of Hestahaller a chance to, uh, to recoup, to recoup their dead in, in another way. Uh, certainly you would not, you would not shy from a trial by combat. So let's pause. What is like, I don't actually know what that would mean. Cause that's a big, cause if the question is like, I'll fight him and maybe we'll die. That seems like something even the manliest dude would be like, well, Hey, like you guys kept on asking me to make this agreement. And now you're basically saying, can I just kill you possibly instead? Or you can kill me, uh, which I'm just trying within character. I'm fine with whatever. I mean, out, out of character, I'm fine with whatever happens. Did we know what that stake actually is within the, the realm of the game? I, I think that uh, it could be that um, it's it's to prove yourself in combat, uh, and it's not about killing the other person. Um, so you you settled it by showing that you're the best. Okay, so that's fine. I just want to uh, I want to I wanted to clarify yeah, that yeah. it wasn't an automatic assumption of one of us has to die at the end of this. That's that's what I wanted to make sure. Yeah, that um, sounds more reasonable. Okay, um, I mean. I'm. I mean, I I know that that uh, Seeger that you know the law as as do I. This, I mean, I'm I'm of course happy to participate in trial by combat, but that seems, um, that seems odd because it seems like I have offered freely of of my abundance to others, uh, only to have that thrown back in my face. Seeger, um, rather Seeger, than, rather than... roar, roar. No one is no one is questioning your open hearted generosity. However. <laughs> Were you to take the labor of, of Astrid and Thord from Hestahaller, the farm will founder and, and nothing will grow in their fields. All of your generosity will have gone to I, waste. And, and again, I was fine leaving that debt unnamed until a future time, except for I was constantly rushed by inpatient souls to a, to a point where I had to decide what makes the most sense right now. And when asking for that debt to simply be repaid, I am now being... Uh, insult us as if the offer was not a fully just and reasonable resolution to only what was asked of me. Enough talk. <laughs> as Do you accept or not? going for it, huh? As this rant is happening, Astrid is for sure moving in the general direction of Roar. There is like a full... Astrid. <laughs> and just like adds on at the end, like, sure, Thor, maybe it wouldn't be the worst thing to move. You have become too close and entangled with Gunner. Maybe it would be good to get you, a, to get some distance, some breathing air, uh, and is like just moving over. Papa, so. Papa, I like the fish man. <laughs> so is she, she's coming over to Thord and says this? She is moving towards Roar while saying this to Thord. Like, this is a, like, she knows what's up. She knows yeah. the, the attention, like, she gets an attention from Roar that she does not get from Thord, and that, like, this is a potential, like, move away from being isolated on that farm with the two. She knows what's up. She knows what's up. It's all she said she wants away. It's yeah. really the jam. All right. Sigurd's eyes are wide, and he is redoing some calculations. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Gunnar also right. was like, oh, maybe I should have been on Seagard's side? Like, what? How did I? Maybe there's more. Thord, uh, Thord looks at uh, Roar uh, and uh, waits for an answer. Do you accept? I mean, it, 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 seems, it seems a waste of a perfectly reasonable uh, conversation. And, and again, I, I guess I don't that understand seems if like you're. That cowardice to me. It, it seems like this ha! is Gunnar's choice and not yours. Um, but if, if Gunner is unable to stand for himself, I guess that, you know, his, his incapable farmhand is equally, you know, willing to stand up, then I guess that's yeah, what I'll have to there. accept. You're, you're, going you're in, talking huh? like a coward. If you, if you, uh, if you would, uh, if this wasn't a way for you to talk yourself out of this situation, you would have drawn your sword by now. So let's do it. Uh, I, I think, I mean, we'll, we'll, it'll, it'll certainly end up doing it. I, I don't think that Roar is actually afraid of it. I just think he thinks it's 
I, he he wants everybody to know that it's beneath him uh to to do this God. and so um uh and so he 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 is is definitely pushing um uh, pushing uh, Thord to being more and more and more enraged by his response, uh, but yeah, he'll he'll uh, he'll pre- I will prepare for, co- like you know he'll he'll swizzle his swords or whatnot. I don't know what they I don't know what the actual mechanics here that were like. I mean, as far as the whatever is culturally like appropriate. To, I'd like to I roll for swizzle, please. Yes, I'd roll for swizzle. Um, plus, uh, I I was uh, not that it will matter because I have so little honor and you have so much, but I I uh, I tried to um I tried to insult you by saying that you were a coward. Uh, yeah, and, and I pushed yeah. back. I pushed back on escalation with absolutely worthless farmhand. Yeah. <laughs> um, like I did. I did respond to that. I, yeah. I I assumed you were triggering that. That's why I. Uh, you, All right. You, you called me a coward. I basically said you're worthless and beneath me. All right. Okay. So we're in a, we're in a conflict now. Is that it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um. So I I. If we have gotten our swords out now, I think that um, Thord is just uh, enraged uh, because he he there's so much at stake for him. So he 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 takes his sword and he he swings it over uh, straight towards your head. Uh, Trying to, uh, like, in an unsports, uh, unsportsly manner, like, like before, you, you before can it's really actually feel that like, there is rage behind yeah, this. Right as things would have been about to start, but it was not quite clear that they have. He he just goes yeah, ahead yeah. and lashes out anyways. Um, uh, yeah, I'll, I mean, like, uh, I I'll dodge out of the way and and I, 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 are we just basically does this work like an insult thing where like we just basically kind of double down on. On stuff, or what, how does it work? The, the, it's an escalation it's because an escalation. I, I'm, okay. I I aim to harm you, yeah, and then you uh, um, you have to do so, something worse, or <laughs> so that's harm me back, basically. I, yeah, I, I think I think what I do is I flick out and I and I I clip him and I clip him in a way that is intentionally painful, but not but not life threatening. Just to essentially try to get him to 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 calm down <laughs> down. Say, look, like you know, so. Um, like a shoulder, like I, you know, I, I, I knock his, like I, like I, as his sword kind of goes towards my head, I duck underneath it, hit it to the side, and then like come back up and, and slice his shoulder and say, "Look, um, you're you are not in a place to try to try to do this right now. This does not seem like you are looking for for clarity. It seems like you are looking for my blood, and I will come for yours in kind." Uh. Thord, he he looks up at you with like rage in his eyes, and he says that that has been your plan for the whole time. Uh, you have never uh, cared about the well-being of our uh, of our farm. You just want you just want control over uh, everyone. And then I make another swing with my sword. Um. um. And then he, he swings. I hit it. I'm, I'm, I press his back against the wall, leaning close, and say, um, "God, I hate this." <laughs> um, and I say, um, "If I had, if I had wanted your the the worthless farm that you live on, I would have just let you starve and then taken your wife <laughs> and push and like like whisper it so no one else can hear it except for him." Oh, that's great. Um. Yeah, I think that that does it for him, um, because uh, he he drops this, uh, or he, he he. When you say this, he, I push you back, and then I uh, wrestle you to the ground, um, like get you off balance, and then I I start like pounding you with the hilt of my sword. Uh, really trying to hurt you. It's um, it's beating you up badly. So I, let's walk through this because because the options here are I, I mean I've got plenty of honor so I can keep on pushing back until I make you decide whether you want to kill me, um, or I can just strike a killing blow. Right, those are my two options. Yep. And or you can or you can yield. I could yield. Yeah, I could yield. That's not happening. Uh, <laughs> so um 
Seems the, I mean, I would personally, Tony, he'd be fine, but, but Roar is a, you know, horrible indiv- individual who believes he's fully in the right. Um, so uh, if I just say I strike a killing blow, obviously you get the opportunity to return that. What happens to the honor in the middle? Uh, if there is none, no one, uh, if, if we have both, uh, let's say, uh, when you strike a deadly blow, you, uh, forfeit the, uh, the claim to, to the honor. Okay. So if we both do that, none, none of us gain it. Sure. It just goes away. Um, I do think we've reached a narrative point in combat where like, I have to do something grievous to you. Um, I guess I could just do that. Like I, um, uh, I don't know that I strike a killing blow, but I wait till you draw back your sword. Um, and I, uh, just, uh, plunge my sword like through your arm, uh, and it kind of juts out the other side, uh, like forcing you to drop your sword. All (laughs) right. I think that's the fucking, I think that's that for, for Sigurd. He was, like Sigurd's a, a baby, but I do think I do think having seen having seen you know family get injured here, uh, he's he's gonna take this opportunity to jump in. Um. Uh, hmm. I guess Are there's you no chance. Insult him? <laughs> I feel like I just wanna. Because for sure, I think that like maybe Seeker jumps in, but for sure, I think that Gunner confronted with the idea, like I have no honor, I have no stakes, I have been like repeatedly shit on by everybody involved. I think in this whole I think, situation. I think Gunner jumping in makes way more yeah. narrative sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like yeah. I think Gunner is the like, and the person that I care about the most is just been like grievously wounded. Kick it. Um, and the only action that Gunner possibly could take to engage in this, like even just this is kind of cool, like I think narratively this makes sense, but it's kind of a fun moment, like mechanically, because the literal only thing that I can contribute to a conflict is a killing blow because I have no honor, right? And so I feel like that's a kind of like, so I feel like that's for sure the thing that happens is I just am angry, frustrated and run in uh, I mean, it was a little bit my plan anyway beforehand, before I mean, Thorne decided he was going to take up the, the honorable way. Narratively, I like the idea that we're like on the ground before you and I've just skewered him. And yeah. I'm like, essentially, I'm looking right. I'm looking at him, but we are right in front of you. I, th- I like I yeah. think you not even having to move, like, but having to yeah. watch this happen right in front of you is is exactly where we're at. Yeah, I for sure feel like Gunner jumps in and just gets a, like, takes advantage of the fact that you are both, or that, rather, that, like, Roar is occupied and does, like, an angry, some kind of angry throat slit. Maybe maybe a brutal chop, depending on the angles. <laughs> yeah, All right. I, yeah, I think, I think narratively we see, like, yeah, I stab his arm, you swing an axe down and just split my skull, like, all of a sudden out of nowhere. Uh, but I also think, cause I get, I get a response killing blow, correct? Yeah, sure. Does it matter yeah, but, who it's directed yeah. to? Uh, no, you can, um, sweet. So I think at was... that moment, um, uh, as like, as I feel that axe coming in, I, I basically twist to try to figure out where it's coming from and my throat, my, my, uh, my sword slides across, uh, Thord's throat as I do that, mm. uh, killing him also. Yeah. Rude. Very appropriate. Does that mean that Thorn dies with the pile of honor as the only one who like didn't like in the afterlife? I don't know if there's an afterlife mechanic, but like because the two of us did the dishonorable thing, but you're in the conflict. Uh, oh, but he's dead since, at the end of the conflict. Yeah, since yes. I'm dead, I, I don't uh, I don't gain, gain any honor from the conflict. I think uh, it's more like. However, like, however, go to Gunner. Do what? Does the stuff in the pot go to Gunner? Then? So Gunner had stepped in on that side. It doesn't matter uh, in in, in this and I situation. forfeited it by yeah, that's by true. killing that. a killing yeah. blow. In my mind, what that like what the mechanic supports as far as like I think this would be but like narratively that in that in my mind that changes how we think of you after you're gone, right? Like you were the only yeah. one who acted in honor in this conflict, and so like the memory of you becomes like full of that honor afterwards is what it kind of yep that's 
I, we can talk more about that later, but that's yeah, a yeah. good way to think about it. So all of the honor goes uh, goes away. Um, I I bleed out uh, in the uh, in the middle of this uh, of this place, uh, like reaching towards Gunner, uh, trying to say something, and it's just a gurgle, uh, and then it's gone. I and that. I know the scene is going to be over, but the way in which I wish for this to end, uh, as a few surviving, although Sigurd, you are here, so you could have input, uh, is I think I'm going to like pick up Thord's body and like go over and put it, I don't know, in a cart or like some way, like intending to take it back to Hesta Holler and turn to ask, I'm now talking to myself, uh, turn to Astrid, uh, and be and say something like, "You wanted to be here, so you can stay here and just leave." Nice. <laughs> she is no longer invited back. I'm I'm waving the green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's now. good. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I actually I actually love the idea. I know that we've got like Sigurd uh, has told me. I actually kind of love the idea of narrating post this like narrating where we see the women at <laughs> this thing like doing closing scenes where it's like let's talk about what they yeah. need to get at the end but that's that's we can do that in a second secret did you have anything you just look at the well, camera and say the house always wins baby yeah but essentially um i know i know the laws which means um basically because I, I do I do own land. It is marginally better. The guy who I was in debt to is dead. He only has a daughter. Uh, oh, and the uncle, Eric, Roar's stuff might revert to Eric. Um, at least considering the tree that we have right now. Uh, so basically... I'm going, since I know the laws, I'm going to leverage this into getting all of Roar's shit. Well, I do, I actually, I don't know if you're paying attention to the map. I do have a young son named Thorkel, and Eric is technically no longer oh, my blood. Thorkel. Oh, that's true. I forgot about the Thorkel. Hmm. <laughs> well, well, Eric can take, well, no, they're not blood. Let's, uh, let's do, let's do, I think put you in post-scene narrations. Do you have anything else in the scene is that you want to do? In the scene. I guess it would be bad form to go through Roar's pockets, so I won't. Um, I may, I may go and um, and comfort Astrid, though. Okay. I do think, I do think that. I mean, despite Astrid's ambitions, she's probably still quite shaken. So I will. I think that as the as the camera pulls away, I have draped my coat over her, and I'm you know just trying to comfort her a bit. Awesome. Cool. Yep. Are we done? Like, I mean, scene. Like, that's it, right? The, the scene is done. The scene and, is done. And uh, I, I was just going to say that since this is the last scene, and it feels like we've, uh, we've we're done with this story now. Mm -hmm. Um, but what would happen now is that we would uh, start a blood feud. Um, since, uh, it started by Gunner killing. Mm -hmm. Roar, and then Roar killed Thord. Correct. Mm. And they're not related, so it's a really a lot, like a messy blood feud between all the three families. Uh, so I just wanted to show how it works. Totally. Uh, yeah. You you put. Oh, let's see. Uh, you have this feud card with uh, four honor tokens on it, mm. and when you act to. Uh, to either uh, to avenge the the feud by killing someone from the other family, you gain four honor, and then you put on another honor token. So the next one who avenges it gains five oh. honor tokens, and so on. Oh. So <laughs> that's so good. Great, but uh, that is for uh, more of a long term play, uh, I would say. Yeah. Awesome. But I think that's that's it for our our session. Yeah.
Do, is, do you say uh, you have a normal decompress process for afterwards? Yes. Yes. That is one of the most important parts I've learned. Um, so I'm just going to, uh, to run that through. Uh, it's a, a couple of questions uh, that we uh, respond to collectively. Let's see here. Um, what, what page is it on? It's on page 38. So um, the last 30 minutes is reserved for the debrief. And we take turns answering the following question. What was your favorite moment in the game? Um, so we can start with um, Sigurd, perhaps? Hmm. Um. Oh, sorry. We shouldn't use character names. Uh, Quinn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> go back. That's the whole point. Let's go back. Let's go back to, to like, get out of the now. fiction. So, yeah. Ah. Come on. Go. 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 Um. <laughs> I think. I think maybe. I really, I really liked the. The particular scene between um, Gunnar and Thord, uh, where they're like, "What the fuck have we done?" You know. Like something you're like, what? Oh my god, that was that was a really like you really felt the the, the tension and the conflict, uh, the internal conflict there. I thought it was cool. Okay, um, let's see, Tony. Um, I actually really liked just the, <laughs> the opening scene where both Quinn and I were playing uh, Shiv and um, and is it Astrid, right? Um, and having those specifically those two women, one who's like shy, aloof, and witty, and one who is, um, uh, you know, canny or perceived as being canny and duplicitous and manipulating, like, um, like having these two intelligent women, like, in the immediately thrown into the middle of the setting, I felt like created a really strong dynamic for Astrid being in every scene, like that. Like, I feel like for, that was the point at which, like, okay, Shiv and Astrid are both clever. Astrid is detached. Or, or Shiv is detached. Like Astrid is in the middle of this, moving this yeah. stuff around. Um, create a really strong sort of like we're focused on the men and their actions, but also here's here's a corridor of power that is outside of that, which felt like a like especially in this in the context of how we play like a really cool thing. And it, it like that that's how it evolved. But the, the initial kind of genesis of that was that opening scene, and that was actually kind of really satisfying for me because I don't know that it's what I expected based on the kind of definition of the game and so yeah that was nice uh gunner am i am i allowed to say that uh, really sorry like... sorry max oh <laughs> uh, am i allowed to say that i really liked tony's final insults <laughs> i feel like that like the like largely i mean not like i mean like liked as much as you could like but i feel like having a having a like resolution moment of like this person has revealed that they are like i i always love the moments when like the bad guy is removes the the facade of not a bad guy and is just fucking horrible like that's a that's a moment that i like where it's like yeah we all suspected that you were bad and then they just kind of like do a, a subtle shift and are the worst right uh, maybe that's cool. also cool fresh in my mind yeah, uh, I am. I also liked the the last scene where we where we kind of got to resolve all this unfinished business um, and see what it was all about. And I, I really enjoyed the idea that uh, Roar uh, wanted Astrid and Thor to come live live with them as payment. Uh, so yeah, that was nice. Uh, now we're going into some uh, of the more specific questions, and th this is free for everyone to to, to talk about. Um, so I, I'm just going to throw it out there. Uh, what surprised you the most about the role of men and the role of women in this game? How and why? I'll go first. I kind of I kind of named that like already. I feel like a little bit. I I was really worried. Yeah. Like it does. There's obviously an intentional uh, removal of faculties of the female NPCs and an objectification that is evident and clear and as uncomfortable as it might be, like it's the, it's the, it is from a design standpoint, the best representation of that in the game, the, but then also seeing whoever was playing Astrid having a lot of control in the scenes was also something that was really surprising. And, and 
that I that I actually like really loved that that moment of surprise of like okay if people are playing this intentionally and consciously to explore these ideas they're not giving into that part of the trope and there is still plenty of capacity for agency if you're playing with people who are enjoyable people to play this game with i guess it's the best way to say it um and but i was just surprised by that like i, I think that's an, an important thing to know which may be the reverse of what i'm supposed to actually talk about but that's what that's what i think initially no i mean that that definitely is a big thing that struck me here as well is like it's the despite the fact that the women don't have any they don't have mechanical weight, but they have plenty of fictional weight. And I think that's a really good representation for the role that women used to be forced to play in society, where despite how you know intelligent they were, despite how much influence they may have had over the men in their lives when it came down to it, like, like on, for worse, objectively, the men were the only ones who had the capacity to, to pull that trigger because of how society was structured. Um, so this lets you really kind of experience the implications of that in a very in a very concrete sense because you're like here I am embodying this you know actual person who is a woman and it's like I really want to be able to do this but I can't I need to wait for the man in the scene to say something about this you know like that's fucking neat that's fucking neat to be to be put right in that place yeah I definitely think the role of women in the like in the game was the more surprising part. Cause I think that's also like, you know, part of the pitch is like, we know kind of what the role of men is going to be within the game context, right? Like we, it's kind of like, it, it, it says that right on the box. <laughs> um, like the men are gonna be toxic. They're gonna be active. They're gonna be like telling their stories, right? But I actually think that like what I, what I also was kind of surprised by pleasantly was that like women, the, the women NPCs have like quite a lot they have a lot more presence in the game than I think I originally had kind of thought, uh, not knowing very, like knowing very little about it. So that was very, like that was the very surprising moment. Right. Um, for, for me, I um, I really thought it was interesting how, how Max, you played uh, Gunner, uh, because you we, we've played this a game with people who, who were none of the players adopted the the toxic behavior and they well we don't need it no, no one is like pushing us um and, and your character did that uh pretty much he was just a decent guy um and it, it it's like it's funny to see how how the rest of the group reacts to that because i when i play this game and everybody's like hard in on acting toxic it it's it feels like yeah that's the the reasonable thing to do let's just do it uh, but then when there is another force that is kind of trying to be reasonable and all that it, it as a man in in that situation you're like but you should stand up for yourself but then why don't you and oh i have to stand up for you now or uh, and there's a lot of questions that arise from that situation which i find interesting I think it's, I'm, I'm looking at like the questions of this debrief and I, like there are other questions and I think they kind of like lead into each other. But for me, it's like a little bit of an interesting, like I am surprised at my own inability. Like I came into today prepared to be like, I'm going to be bad. I'm going to, I'm going to try and be bad and even start it off. Right. Where I'm like, I'm going to slam in the door. I'm going to be angry. I'm going to be aggressive. And then just failed miserably at maintaining <laughs> that degree of like, heightened like masculinity and it's kind of interesting it was interesting for me to watch that be like i don't i don't know if i know how to do what i'm supposed to be doing yeah. right now as, as somebody who did that really well apparently can i can i <laughs> can i talk a little bit about my mindset in that regard is that okay yes please like do. i um my thought was 100 because originally like i was like i don't know like I, I know a little bit about this guy and i love how open the character creation is like this is what i know about this guy right um and uh and like in my mind there are all sorts of reasons why i know how and why he was doing what he was doing as far as those little bits that we get from the beginning none of which came up in narrative and don't matter and are not moral justifications I and mean, we just like mechanical concepts right um the like i was like okay what is my 
what it, what are my good impulses that I'm always worried are not genuine enough? Like, and then I was like, okay, let's let's embrace a character who has some of those same impulses, but absolutely for the wrong reasons, right? So like, I love being able to be generous. I love being able to take care of people. I love like all those things. But what if I was doing all of those for the entirely wrong reason? And just that's where I went. Like I took I took things that I love doing, I hope for the right reasons, and just was like, but let's just let's just name that this character does not do them for the right reasons. Like it's great to give people food for the winter, but the answer should just be like, yeah, like here you go. We're good. Right. But instead <laughs> it's a gift that then instigates this entire chain of events of like you owe me. And all I really want is your women and your stuff and your, like, I just want to control you. And even abstractly, which is never my impulse, right? Like, that's never my impulse. It was like, what's this normal good? And then how do we take that thing and just and make it toxic? Which I think is like, that is like the constant conversation around in the culture about whether toxic masculinity exists or not, or what it is, or all these other things. Like, it's one of the reasons I was very attracted to the idea of this game from the get-go, it's like, yes, and it is the subverted impulse of what is good to the end of power or vanity. And so, like, that was entirely my... And then, like, mechanically, it was like, okay, I'm just going to play it as, as the GA, like, to, to create the dissociation or that... What did you call it right before we started, Peter? The um, uh, Self-distance. The self-distance for that. <laughs> I was like, okay, just think about it as a GM running a villain, but that's just who you're playing, right? And so... Mm. Um, like that was how I got myself in the mindset of it, but the the character's impulses were my good impulses turned bad. And that's the only way I was able to like play the character the way I did. I don't know if that makes sense or not. Yeah, sure. Yeah, real um, quick, just a, a fun yep. a fun little thing. Um a friend of mine who was watching the stream uh texted me in all caps, I wanna play this game, I wanna be a toxic man. <laughs> So you've got okay. one convert. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs> you've converted one person to toxic masculinity. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, mission successful. All right. Um, this game claims to be about toxic masculinity. Did the behavior of the men live up to this? And what do you think was going through their heads? We're, we've already touched upon it a bit, but is there something you'd like to add? I think that like this, I mentioned this on the break a little bit, but I think that like because this is a first playthrough, there are definite moments where like my inhibitions blocked some of potentially of like a deeper engagement with like being toxic you know like i think that like if given uh it like if playing this again i think i would probably lean into those things more partially because like i do like i, I do really like the the mechanical scaffolding of bad behavior right like the, the actions that you can do i think we, we spent a lot of our time actually not triggering that many moves Right, like we spent we yeah. spent a, a good amount of play being like we're just we're just doing it, um, mm -hmm. and I, I think that like one of the things that I kind of like is that like those moves are very um, taking those as prompts to like allow a little bit like deeper push into some of those less than desirous uh, actions um, is a thing that I think I would be like. Cause like, cause yes, they do. Like when you, when you play into the mechanics, like it really does mimic, uh, mimic a lot of those interactions in the real world. Yeah. I, um, I, no, I, like, I thought it was great. I, even though we didn't trigger a lot of the mechanics, well, they're actually like, I think I, like there were a couple of times where I was like, I want to trigger five mechanics right now. Like there was little loops that I was mm -hmm. like messing around with. Like, I want to compliment, give a gift so that I can set up your dependency on me so that when I insult you, you can't do anything to me. Like I was, I was from the very beginning, like I, I, what is my character doing here. to create this toxic power structure? And what is, and what is the core loop of toxicity that he creates? And that drove like my entire character's like mindset, like just picking those, those three off the bat, which again, it wasn't until we were sitting there and gambling. And then there was this problem in front of me where I was like, I'm not involved in this. But if I was a toxic man, there's no way I'm not going to insert myself into it and, like, do something to make it work to my benefit, right? Like, and show how great I am. And so that was, like, it was really interesting to see, and it was really interesting to, like, even thinking about, like, and, and honestly, just bad choices I made as a younger man, like, toxic things I did, um, like, 
like yeah i mean like it was it was like it was really interesting yeah i i was surprised by or uh when everybody's playing like into the mechanics as you were uh, saying uh play becomes uh, a bit different uh, but if if we kind of uh if we play more uh, in in like a story mode where you have your your head in the fiction rather than looking at the moves um it's the, well play play becomes uh, very different so uh, that's that was interesting to me um but i mean there were a lot of toxic masculinity going on here so i think that it uh, we did a good job. Uh, so uh, next Again, question I'm not is the most sad that I failed to be horrible. I'm not exactly. Like... You, I mean, you shouldn't. I, I tried. Able... I tried. I just didn't win. And, and I'm and I'm a little and I'm I'm more than a little upset with myself that <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, okay. So the uh, next question is: Can you find any parallels between how a man is supposed to be today and what the game says a man is supposed to be? Do you see any differences? I mean, I kept being like, in my mind, I was like, if this was just a good, like if this was just my group of people right now, there would be happy little gay farm and Astrid would have left her wife, left her <laughs> husband. And if she wanted to, could have just joined Roar's polyam farm. <laughs> I mean, Roar seems bad. So maybe don't go join that polyam farm, but uh I feel like the way that these things would manifest within my current community, but that's very different than like as a community that is actively trying to disengage from the way these things uh, exist in the world. I don't think, I don't know how the, the rest of y'all feel about this, but I don't feel, I don't feel hugely historical about the, the story we just told. Like, I don't feel like we were like, well, we're doing things that only would happen even though that is the framing, right? It's, I don't at any point feel like this was, oh yeah, it's so far away. Like it's so far in history as to not be relatable. Yeah. I feel, um, yeah, I feel like this could easily have been said in like the 1920s, right? Oh, yeah. And like, and like, uh, and in a number of different settings across the world and had, had just the same amount of narrative, like back and forth that we, we had. I think the Viking culture is interesting because there is a there is a level in that 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 in which in which that culture like um uh, all these things were were evidently present and not just like oh they were there but like yeah these were these were parts of what the culture viewed as success or power or other, like it was present and it was it was not just near the surface it was on the surface in a way that I think in most of most of what we like to think of as modern history uh, especially modern Western culture uh, Western white culture um, we've we've been trying to at least had some conscious reality that maybe we shouldn't let people know we're doing this, right? Like maybe we shouldn't, we should, maybe we shouldn't be obviously horrible. We should be subtly horrible, or if we're going to be horrible, only when we feel unassailable or unapproachable. Um, and, um, and now we're actually at a place in society where like that is becoming the conversation is here, right? Like finally, like, Hey, like, why did we do these things? Like, why were these considered okay? Um, where where are those impulses? Like, the, the thing that this game is trying to do, I think, is great. And so I do think there are, and it's hard because, like, the the uh, the polyphony of cultural realities in the modern world is very present. So there are places where this is, yeah, this is still exactly how people behave, by and large. And there are other places where it's like, like you were just saying, Max, like, in your friend group, this is, like this wouldn't be like this wouldn't be it just wouldn't be a thing you know um and uh i think for me one of the biggest parallels are like the actual conversational elements that like this right now like this db pro process is like i feel like our culture is trying to debrief around this stuff right now and <laughs> like um uh and i think that's i think like as for me that's one of the most exciting things but i still think advertising like um uh you know, uh, culture geared at, at people 12 or younger. Like, I still think there's still all these elements that, you know, absolutely exist as a parallel in, in most parts of culture currently, um, like in the, in the majority that is, uh, that is hard. I mean, I grew up on an island of 2000 people and this is all there. This is not like, and that's not even just, I grew up there 20 years ago, right? Like this is like, it's a very, very small isolated mm -hmm. town. 
there like and for sure that's the entirety of the culture there right like there they will probably never progress that far uh <laughs> and so i don't even i like for me it's like yeah i think this is kind of omnipresent as much as I think probably most of the people in this conversation have tried to carve out spaces that that is not true in. Um, I feel like it's still kicking around quite a bit. I think what was kind of an interesting, maybe this is jumping ahead in the questions, but jumping off of a, a little bit of what uh, Tony was saying, like for me, part of the interesting conversation was like seeing my own like watching a narrative happen and being like oh if i were mega toxic i would do this now and i am experiencing my own discomfort with even engaging with that right like we all know exactly what the correct in-game action is in any moment which means that literally everybody knows how toxic masculinity works, right? Like if you can say, oh, I'm being prompted with toxic masculinity, what, how, what would that look like? And all of us are like, we know exactly what that would look like, right? Like it, it, is, mm. it is a comfortable and like common dictionary that I think everybody has access to. I think what um, some of the parallels that, that I was seeing are, are capitalistic ones. Um, the relationships that we saw um, these toxic relationships that we saw between people in this game, I think, are similar to uh, a person's toxic relationship with their employer or with their bank. Um, you know, these these webs of you know, this this source of forced forced scarcity, and then trying to trying to seek trying to seek help. And this is like not something that's going to be in every game of this, but for this game in general, um, uh, in specific, I mean. It is just a reminder that the structures of capitalism are inherently based on these on these feudal structures of fealty and debt that only occur when you have systems based on this strange uh, hierarchy that's been around for so long. Um, so that's 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 what I thought this game had to say about about that. And they were all created by male dominated cultures. Imagine that. Yeah, crazy how that happens. Um, but it's interesting that you say that because when Amos was playing this with the uh, Svartvik and Rollspels pod, uh, a Swedish role playing podcast um, earlier before the Kickstarter, um, they realized that class is very much also part of this game. Like uh, the ones who own land often tend to have a more central position and have more power just by having crossed that trade. Yeah. Um, so uh, that is, uh, th there are a lot of things being explored um, or parallels that you can see. Uh, absolutely. Uh, let's take the last question. Uh, what will you take away from this experience and what would you like to leave behind? Oof, I'd like to leave my guilt behind for how well I did. I don't know <laughs> that I will. Um, I mean, I died in the end, which I mean, makes me feel a little bit better. Um, but um, yeah, it's. I, I mean, it's a. It's a. I think a classic like cis het white dude's name. But I'd like to leave my guilt behind. Um, <laughs> the. Uh, um. But no, like I like I actually really would be excited to play this game with people. I actually also really appreciate. I want to say this, like, uh, I we you know we had a a, a a pretty decent number right when we started. It dwindled down pretty quickly, and part of that's like I don't know how people com are comfortable people are with this. Um, Peter, some of our earliest conversations were like, how do you get people to talk about this? Do people feel safe playing this game? Like a lot of really big things, and so you know, like um, uh, I I think it's such a a challenging conversation. Um, for me, actually, I will say this. One of the major takeaways are, like, how great games can be about getting people to open up about really complex things, engage in them, process through them in an authentic way, and then have a dialogue about them afterwards. It's one of the reasons I love games, but I don't know that I've ever seen, seen a, see a game push earnestly into it this way um, around this difficult of a topic. Uh, that's probably wrong. There probably are other games that do absolutely that, and I'm just missing them. Max, you got one you want to throw out? <laughs> yeah, I, I do. I, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. We've, so we've had two games that we've been inspired by in some. Uh, oh yeah, you do. And those two games are actually absolutely great. Go ahead and 
shout them out. Uh, Dog Eat Dog is a uh, small indie game uh, that uh, revolves around colo- colonialism, uh, and and uh, it's it it's also a token token based game, and it's very lightweight. So I I, I recommend that. Um, and then there's also Kagematsu uh, that revolves around the um, like uh, it's it's about uh, townswomen in a feudal Japanese village, uh, and there's this warlord who who goes there, and then they try to court him uh, to get him to protect the village when the war comes there. Um, so. Um, those are very like um, directed experiences to kind of address a, a specific topic, um, and they do it quite well. I will also throw in the watch. The watch, watch. is one that like very intentionally is trying to to take on toxic masculinity in particular. Like in specifics, it's a few years old. Um, oh, I haven't heard about that. It's it's pretty great. Yeah. I have played it a couple like I played it a couple of times. It's a different it's kind of the inverse if I remember correctly because I haven't played it for a while but I had a great time with it. All of the characters like you can't be a man playing mm. but like you are playing in a world where the influence because because uh I think it's like the men have been I'm going to butcher this and I'm so sorry because they're such great game designers but like the it's that uh men have had been influenced by like a great evil and so it has. It is up to the yeah. people that are and, on the outskirts of that to try and confront that evil. And the characters you're playing can become influenced by that evil. And it talks about the overflow of toxic masculinity onto like yeah. people who aren't men and how that starts to influence the way that you think. It's a very, very, very good game. It's very good, and it's very. It's actually like it would be really interesting to like bookend these two games, like to do a like double feature because they're very different. Like they're kind of a different access to to a similar and they're very different mechanically uh but like to to play completely different sides of a potentially similar problem yeah. is very yeah. it would be very interesting i will make sure to check it out and i know there's a few others and i know we're certainly escaping them if anybody was watching this later and you want to <laughs> drop them in the chat wherever you're watching it at absolutely please do let us know um because like, like i said that's one it's one of my favorite things about games it's one of the major ways i've used games as a designer for years is to say, let's have a conversation about X, but it's fun when games kind of drop any sense of, well, this is kind of a conversation about it and just go to, no, this is what we're talking about. Like, and we want not only for you to play in it, but then to to talk, like to spend time sitting with it afterwards, which I love. Um, And so, um, which I know is a little bit meta version of this question. Um, I think, I think the other thing is like, for me, like, like being, being open and not expecting excuses for any past toxic behaviors of my own, right? Like, because I think it's really easy to try to pretend like, especially when like you're, you know, in your thirties and forties to look back at your, especially teenage like behavior and be like, like, well, yeah, it's whatever. I was just a teenager, but it's like, yeah, but you were being fed by some of these same impulses, but you also made these choices and you should be able to just say like, I was wrong and to not be afraid of talking about them so that other people don't think they're just being swept under the rug with also, also without demanding that anybody else forgives you for them. Like, you know, like that it was your own issue and that you should basically have to bear some of the guilt, like you should have to bear the guilt of it um, as a lesson for other people and for yourself primarily, right. To like avoid all those toxic impulses. Cause I won't, like, I, I think it's easy to pretend like we're like someone's that they're just never there. And they are like, um, and it takes society, societal acknowledgement of those things in actually order to move the conversation forward um, and not just ignore it, pretending like I've never done that or I've never had that impulse. And so, um, or at least for me. Yeah, I think it's weird. Um, not weird. I don't know. I don't know. It's like, for me, it's interesting because I look at this and I'm like a lot of, um, a lot of my life is spent trying to counter all of the ways in which I am expected to behave uh, how I now appear. 
right? Like when you talk back about your teenagers, I'm like, well, I was a woman in my teenagers. So I wasn't doing, I was like still pretty masculine. And so like, whatever, but like, I was doing a different thing. I think probably um, in the, not that I wasn't doing embarrassing things that I probably need to forgive myself for or whatever. Like, I think that's a, a universal experience, but like, I, I do keep, I think I keep coming back to this moment of like watching my own resistances to engage with the game is actually really telling right? Like that in and of itself has a whole lot of value and is like one of the the very interesting parts about playing a game like this, where it's like, I am trying not to engage with these things because I am usually hyper vigilant about engaging in these things. And that has a lot of, uh, there is a lot of conversation to be had in that kind of like interstitial between you and the game place, which I think is like what, you know, Tony, when you're talking about games have the ability to do that, like that for me is one of the more interesting talking parts of games, right? Is like, there's the like you part and then there's the character and then there's the, the mechanics and like in those in-between bits are some really interesting like and enlightening moments and like good moments for self-reflection. And I think that games like this, the part of the reason they're interesting for me is because they're really like, what is that spot? Like what is, like we require you to have this reflection and actually like engage with it um, in a way that some games don't ask that of you just outright. Yeah. And I mean, and I think every game should have rituals to play. Like, I, I mean, I, I think there's something enjoyable about, and that some of this is my own preferences and proclivities. And so if it's not your jam, it's whatever. Um, something that you do that evokes the reality that you're playing now, right? So the even the setup process of this game of saying like, we're going to build this world as an entree to it, which my, my, my game design ethos is, is world building. Like, so it's like, you're going to, you're going to, uh, create the world, open the world, enter the world, explore the world, like close the world. So like this for me is like prime, like this is what I love in game design. Um, but like that, the process of you create the world and then you take a break. Like that was our opening process. And then the, you're, you're going to play through it and then you're going to close with this reflective process. Short or long, I wish more games would engage in a somewhat ritualized capacity for play that says, here's how we know we open up play and here's how we know we're closing it out. Um, mm -hmm. I think is really helpful to keep the lines from blurring, especially when you're exploring bigger ideas and bigger concepts within stuff. Um, and, and so I, that's, I've loved it. Thank you. Um, I, uh, I'm not sure I've, I've had this experience, uh, quite a few times now, so I'm not sure if I have something new that I've uh experienced i i, I re, as you've said i really enjoy that there are spaces in my real life where i don't have to deal with this um that is probably what i'll take away from it um and having to perform in this way is also something i'd like, like to leave behind yeah yeah it's a good one <laughs> please be gone <laughs> Cool. Um, so we normally do this really highly thing where I like then introduce the fact that we do a live stream within a live stream and say a bunch of dumb stuff that feels really artificial right now, especially. Um, so let's not do that. I think I'm just going to go back and clip this entire debrief process into that. Cause we've already talked, we talked a lot about a lot of like what our experiences were playing, which is hundred percent what I'm looking for in that conversation. Uh, but I would love to just throw out to, to, um, to Quinn and to Max, like, do you all have questions about the design, about the the process, about anything else that you want to ask Peter? Because we normally do that all in the interview along with talking about our experiences, but it just seems worth it just to say like, hey, let's go ahead and have yeah. that conversation. So definitely in terms of the design of this, like I'm curious, Max mentioned that like afterlife mechanic, and I feel like this game is is super clean and super tight. And I also feel like though there's like there's room for for other stuff to get to get bolted on and to to add a whole lot of of other richness and 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 depth that might that might be there is that something that maybe you're thinking about are you thinking boy i could have these little expanded rules that that might add like this aspect to the game or this aspect to the game you know um it just seemed it it seems to me that there may be some room for that um obviously all of it's still focusing on what the game is about uh but i think there's something yeah um Definitely. Uh, th there are so many things that you could like continue to explore um, and you could definitely add things. But during this whole design process, we have worked so hard on removing everything that isn't essential. Uh, because since 
as I've said, the it, this game takes four hours to play, and as we've noticed, it, it did. Yeah. Um, and it's really hard to play it in less, uh, and that is a problem because you, preferably, you would want something that takes th three hours, and then if you if if you're slow, it can drag out. Um, but we've we've really tried to just remove everything that hasn't been essential to what we're trying to accomplish. But I mean, if if you would open up to playing this game for uh, like several sessions. That would there there are many possibilities to expand. I'm sure. Uh, also, we've we've discussed about hacking this game uh, because it's it's about the the violent side of toxic masculinity, and it really doesn't address the uh, the intellectual side as much. Mm. Um, you you could have pretty similar mechanics, but then have. Uh, Amos has been talking about uh, hacking it into kind of an uh, academic setting, where yeah. people are the ones who know who knows best. And yeah. uh, academic and corporate were the immediate two places. It was like I was like I can yeah. think of a couple other historical cultures, but like the academic and the corporate world, like are the two other analogs that I immediately was like, that's what this feels like. <laughs> yeah, there are many similarities there as well. Um, so we'll see what happens right now. We just want to make this as good as we can. Yeah. Cool. Max, any questions from you? I, I mean, I'm curious about the, the, so like, I think, I think you hit it a little bit as we were playing, but when I originally like, uh, was looking at the rules, the, the, it's very interesting to me, the decision to require women present to like bear witness to the behaviors of men, right? Because also when I think about like, this is for sure just my personal experience, but like one of the things that really shocked me when I transitioned was like how the, there's this whole other world of men speaking to men that I did not know about, right? Like I was all of a sudden accepted into this club and I was like, oh, you guys just talk about really dumb stuff all the time. But uh, this is not like, <laughs> Sometimes they're very good conversations, but it was like there's these whole behind closed doors way in which toxicity manifests when men are only speaking to other men. And so I was really curious about the like the the design choice to um, make women bear witness to this. And like as a representation of society, I think is what you said. But like I was that that is the one piece that I was like, oh, I'm really curious about the thought process behind that and that like got there. I think um, the reason why we've made that is because in the beginning we we felt like women women felt powerless uh, and they didn't feel uh, essential. Sometimes they just felt like wallpaper, um, and I mean sometimes their their presence they don't do anything even though they're present, but um, if they are. It, we, we we really shouldn't forget that women are there and mm -hmm. it shouldn't just be oh yeah and i have to include a man in this or a woman in the scene uh I, I guess i'll take that woman and then she doesn't say anything through the whole scene um so we've really worked to try to get women to be central and one of the easiest way uh, the easiest ways was to just say that there has to be one in every scene. Uh, and just by adding that, we felt uh, quite a big difference. Um, so, uh, but I'm, as, as you're saying, there is, of course, toxic behavior uh, or toxic masculinity and aspects of it that happen where women don't uh, watch. And that is something I guess that this game just doesn't cover. Yeah, or it's a hack or a DLC. Like, like it'll yeah. come out and I'll be like, this yeah. well, I think and I think that I think that the inclusion of women as an audience is actually a totally if you hadn't done that, this game wouldn't work. Because toxic masculinity exists inherently as a performance and so like there's also the discussion like you mentioned that this this toxic stuff happens even when women aren't around 
And I think in a very real sense for people who, who are unfortunately like inculcated into, into toxic masculinity who are, have just bought it. I think for them, metaphorically speaking, there's always a woman in the room. Um, and like, like in their head, even when there's nobody else around, it's just them and another man. I think they feel, they feel that those eyes on them. Um, and so I think that having the women there is like, even if maybe there wouldn't have been a woman there physically in the scene, like the, the, the knowledge of them and their influence and, and, and everyone's judgment one way or another, uh, I think that having that personified is, is the keystone for the whole thing. Yeah. I, 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 I also, I agree. Like, I think the, like, cause I think the thing that immediately comes to mind is like the, the, fairly common experience. I won't say universal, but the fairly common experience is like the locker room, right? Like, and what happens in the locker room is still all performative. And it is oftentimes, and I'm not even just talking about like what is oftentimes dismissed as locker room talk. Um, that's not even what I'm talking about, but there's always kind of this conceit, I think in those scenarios of whatever I do here will become public knowledge in some way, shape or form. And so I am, I am still performing I'm not necessarily performing for the people in front of me, though there is some level of that, so much as I am performing for those who are not here who will hear about it later. Um, and that's good and bad, but I think it absolutely a thing. And it, like I said, that's that's there are other instances in which that happens. I think it happens anytime men who are not who who have a toxic impulse or who engage in toxic impulses are together. I think that's absolutely a reality. Um, but I think that's the, the one of the most common ones that is is kind of a touchstone that people might be able to. Yeah. identify with um that's very interesting yeah yeah and i think that like I, like this is again this is like something that i read and then as we played it i was like oh i get what the function of it is here and i think it's uh like i do think it's an important statement to say that women exist and they have to exist in your world <laughs> um uh i think i think for me it's a, like it's just an instant instant thought i had because uh my experience of masculinity is the opposite right like masculinity is not performing for women it's performing for other men Right, like that is the, and so even it's oh, less for me that there's always a woman, a woman present, and more that like even if there are women present, I am what well, you are performing to impress other men, which I think is like part of the really good, like the the is mimicked in this game in the central mechanic of like only being able to act and trigger events between men, right? Like that is who is ultimately uh, engaging in those things. Um, yeah, it was just a, like I, I think it's a really interesting. I think it's a very effective framing yeah. of all of these things I, I love right? that. I, yeah, especially I, after playing it any things that i had where i was like i don't get it it's like oh i get it now like yeah. it makes a lot of sense once it this is a game that this is a game that just plain works it yeah. works yeah yeah i think i think some of my mechanical questions would have been like um uh, about like other settings which we, we we touched on a little bit and then um the other one was like the blood feud. Cause I do like the idea of like that piece growing. And I even like the idea of there's a level at which generational play for a few generations could absolutely be a reality in this oh, game. Like yeah. what are, uh, let me look real quick. Like what are, um, like what are Thorkel and Ulf's relationships yeah. growing up because of these blood feuds, because of everything else. Like, um, especially when you're dealing with small communities also knowing how like, um, nepotistic and incestuous like in, in in reality those things are and i use that that ter sense the term incestuous broadly right um uh like how much impulses overlap and communities are actually more complex than they oftentimes draw themselves into being um you know playing this over the course of a few sessions and exploring that out as as NPCs maybe evolve into pcs and as other things happen yeah. like is a really cool that's cool idea um i i didn't say that but when your character is killed you continue to play as one of their male relatives right uh so that is a part of the game but uh we often play this as as a one shot but it, it definitely works uh for several uh sessions as well if you have the time then the, like i said the narrative implications for that are actually really exciting and like like mm -hmm. I, you know, having having watched the very popular TV show Vikings, like watching how they tried to do some of those generation to generation pieces, uh, and then playing this game, 
uh, like there was a really solid connection to like, oh yeah, that's how that feels. And there's a lot of historocracy to that, uh, to that show as much as it is a show and performative, um, also too. And so, um, like I said, like it was, I found it thoroughly enjoyable. Like, but yeah, that generational play was the other piece that you just touched on right at the end that I thought was, was really interesting as an idea also too. So uh, any other last questions that anybody has? Comments? Awesome. Um, well, let's, uh, um, it feels so hard, like anything feels so artificial right now. Uh, and we don't have to hop <laughs> off right away if you guys want to chit chat a little bit more, but, um, go ahead and tell everybody, let's, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll uh, have Quinn start, go to Max after that. I'll go and then we'll get, uh, let, uh, let Peter have the last word on where people can again find the Kickstarter. But, uh, Quinn, tell people where they can find you again online. Sure, sure, sure. You can find me at Twitter at authenticity TRP, short for authenticity trip. Um, currently I'm making a little horror game and it's a uh, spooky and scary awesome max where can people find you online uh you can find me at max melander with two l's because three looked weird <laughs> uh my name is tony Vicinda. you can find everything we do at plus one exp on social media or at plus one exp.com uh, we're a brand that multi-classes in tabletop game design beard and skin care alchemy and the bardic college of content creation uh, we've got a game right now live on kickstarter it's at its last 48 hours uh called repugnant um i haven't looked at it in the last four hours because i've been thankfully occupied uh but uh it's doing really well we're trying to hit either 275 backers or our $5,000 stretch goal, either one of those before we finish. But it's been a great run. Uh, but if you haven't checked it out, go to ttrpg.link slash repugnant. Sorry, well, that works too. TTRPG slash gross RPG is easier to spell though. Um, and so, um, but uh, you didn't come here to hear about that. Uh, um, Peter, tell us again uh, a little bit more about what people can expect when they go to the Kickstarter page for uh, Blood Feud. How are you guys doing? And uh, you can find it at the link below if you're watching live right now. But tell us a little yes. bit about it, Peter. Uh, thank you. I uh, we we've had we've we've so we're so pleased with the uh, the reception that the Kickstarter has got gotten. Uh, we're up at now. I I have the numbers in Swedish kroner, so it doesn't. I'm not sure how it well you'll like, understand. Hold but... on, I will assist you real quick. Okay, I'll I'll, uh, I'll pull uh, it up so in, in American. We're uh. uh we're a bit past 60,000 uh, Swedish kroner and we we have a stretch goal our last stretch goal is at 75,000 um, and we really hope that we get there because if we do we will be able to uh, commission a couple of more illustrations mm. uh, and that would be so good um, in case you're wondering, they're at seven thousand two hundred and fifty-four dollars uh, American, and uh, yeah, I, uh, I I'm just super excited about this game. I like I I remember just kind of interacting with you the first time around it and just saying like I love this. It looks really good. I really want to play this because there is and you even mentioned right before the complexity of um, of even the proposition that you guys have. Period. But then also trying to go from just a conversation in Swedish to a global conversation uh, also too seemed uh, overwhelming. You did a phenomenal job. I know you were a little bit nervous about it, um, but it was it was super easy, very clear. Um, I think the game does exactly what it intends to do in a way that like, I mean, my day's probably a little wrecked now, like, but in, in the best way possible, right? Like I'm gonna go sit with this uh, for most of the rest of the day. And that's what I want from play, whether I'm exploring like a deep emotional complex issue or whether I'm just looking to sit down and have a good experience is something that sits with me for a little while. And so like, I love the weight that you guys have hit here perfectly. Um, uh, it's absolutely phenomenal game. So um, uh, please everybody go check it out. I'll have a polished review uh, in a couple of weeks. It'll be post Kickstarter, but it'll be something you guys can share out. Um, and um, we're looking forward to seeing other people's experiences of play. I still don't have a good way to close down our actual stream. So we just wave at the camera until uh, I can take us off live. So say goodbye, everybody. All right. Goodbye. Thank you so much for